Welcome everybody to our uh, city commission meeting yeah. of October 7th. We'll call the meeting to order. Thank you all for being here. Um, if you will all please rise, Nikki will lead us in our invocation and Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Mayor. Let us all take a moment to begin this meeting to together and reflect each according to our own individual beliefs and intentions. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank um, you, Nikki. Mayor. Yes, ma'am. My man, I'm surprised you didn't mention the raise, praying for the raise. <laughs> <laughs> I would have wore a raise, a raise outfit, but out of respect for the Jays, I did not. Sorry, Blue Jays. <laughs> well, they're not in it. Right? You almost they're made not it. In it now, right? No, they're not in it now. Right. No. So you but could I mean, wear, so you could wear close. the raise tonight. I could, but still, you know. I don't know, Mo. Sometimes you just are out of it, and it's too painful. So I didn't want <laughs> to rub it. If anybody didn't know, Commissioner Franey is a huge baseball freak. <laughs> okay, and that she does great. adjust her life according to all games. <laughs> Well, no, I wouldn't be here if I just well, that's all true. Games. I would be home. <laughs> yeah, but I thought you told Some us. Some things you, do take priority. I thought this you told us you had to leave at 8. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, okay. Uh, we'll go on to presentations. We have the National Friends of the Library Week and proclamation, and so uh, that'll go to Commissioner Kynes. Thank you so much, and uh, Mala and uh, Sandra, you're not going to be brave and come up here too with Phyllis. She okay, Mala and Phyllis, and it's a good time also, uh, I think, to congratulate Mala. She is a new grandmother with baby twins. Oh. I know. They're adorable. Um, whereas friends of the Dunedin Public Library raised money that enables our library to move from good to great, providing the resources for additional programming, much needed equipment, support for children's summer reading and special events throughout the year. And whereas the work of the Friends highlights on an ongoing basis the fact that our library is the cornerstone of the community providing opportunities for all to engage in the joy of lifelong learning and connect with the thoughts and ideas of others from ages past to present. And whereas the friends understand the critical importance of well-funded libraries and advocate to ensure that our library gets the resources it needs to provide a wide variety of services to all ages, including access to print, and electronic materials along with expert assistance in research, readers advisory, and children's services. And whereas the Friends of Dunedin Library have operated a bookstore and hosted book sales for over 20 years to raise funding for youth, teen, and adult programming, and whereas the friends' gift of their time and commitment to the library sets an example for all in how volunteerism leads to positive civic engagement and the betterment of our Dunedin. Now, therefore, I, Deborah Kynes, by virtue of the authority vested in the Mayor Julie ward Bojalski of the City of Dunedin, and on behalf of the entire commission, do hereby proclaim October 17th through the 23rd, 2021, as Friends of the Libraries Week in Dunedin, FL, and urge everyone to join the Friends of the Library and thank them for all they do to make our library and community so much better. Thank you. Ms. Mayor, City Manager, Commissioners, on behalf of the Friends of the Library, thank you very much for this proclamation, for your support. 
oh my goodness, I just forgot her name. Marion Wright Edelman once said, service is the rent we pay for being. The service the friends at the library provide helps with programming and support for our staff at the Dunedin Public Library. In addition, memberships also provide much needed funding. And I just so happen to, to have some uh, renewal or new membership forms. If you have not renewed or have not purchased a membership, please don't hesitate to do so. Besides, it's like one of the best deals in Pinellas County and prices go up in January. Oh. <laughs> As Commissioner Kynes noted, book sales and our bookstore are huge um, sources of income for us, and our holiday outside book sales will be on Saturday, November 13th, as well as December 4th, so we hope to see you there. Again, thank you very much for this honor. It has been a pleasure to be here, and these will be left out in the lobby for you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, not on the agenda, but I'm going to ask to come forward because he has an announcement for us. Don, our park manager at uh, Honeymoon Island and Cal DC and abroad, come <laughs> forward and tell us what we need to know. Okay, well, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here um, to talk about some very, very important meetings that are coming up regarding the management of Honeymoon Island and Caladesi Island. Um, we are in the process of developing unit management plans for both parks. And unit management plans are basically the guiding documents for all of our parks. Every Florida State Park has one, 175 plans are out there. They're 10 year plans and they speak to what our plans are, what we hope to achieve, um, and how we plan to achieve that over the next 10 years. So if I may, the Florida Department of Environmental Protection, Division of Recreation and Parks, announces two public meetings to which all persons are invited. The meetings will provide an opportunity for public involvement in the development of unit management plans for Honeymoon Island State Park and Caladesi Island State Park. Once approved, these plans will become the basic statements of policy and direction for the management of both parks over the next 10 years. Both of these meetings will take place on Monday, October 18th, 2021. The first meeting will be held between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. at Honeymoon Island State Park Rotary Centennial Nature Center, located at 1 Causeway Boulevard in beautiful Dunedin, Florida. This meeting will have an open house format and provide an opportunity for interested persons to view updated plans for Honeymoon Island State Park and Caladesi Island State Park. Attending staff will be available to discuss concepts and answer questions in the conversational setting. No formal presentations will be given, so no need to show up right at 10 o'clock, although anybody is certainly welcome to. The second meeting will be held from 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. again on October, October 18th. This meeting will be held virtually via GoToWebinar and will provide an opportunity for the public to provide input on the 10-year management plan updates for Honeyman Island State Park and Caladesi Island State Park. Very good. I do, uh, um, one of the things I, I wanted to tell you guys is they, they did also have a public input session um, last week, I guess it was, yeah, or earlier thank you for this being week, part Monday. Ma no, last week. Um, anyway, uh, there are a lot of things in the plan, and I have read the plan, but um, the one that we're most interested in right now, of course, is the new entry fe way feature into the park is there. The added turnaround or the expanded turnaround before you get into the gate is there. The automated signage that we're working with FDOT on is in there, as well as possible new tram or ferry service to Honeymoon Island to try to bypass the traffic. All four of those things are in the plan. Um, and uh, many of those things are already being worked on. They're, they're oh, far along into the process, but they have to have it in the plan in order, kind of like our business plan. We don't do anything without putting it in the business plan. So, so this will be good because our residents can see with the documents. Um, if you go on their website, I did post it on my, my Facebook page, 
um, they can see the plan, they can see all the things I just talked about and, and give their input. So it's a great opportunity for our residents to weigh in. Absolutely. We're very proud to be a part of this community and we certainly want the community to come out and uh, kind of make their voices heard. Very good. I have some, uh, some flyers and uh, yeah. agendas. Can I leave those? Yeah, I'd leave them with Rebecca and she'll put them in the appropriate spot. Thanks very for much. For people to see them. Thanks, Don. Mayor. Yes. Um, Jennifer, are we doing some added promotion for those input sessions? We can certainly do that on I think all our social be great, media outlets. Because that, you know, people do obviously, especially on the causeway, but everywhere around. Yeah. You know, it's a big it's a big deal and it would be great to get a good showing. And let's yeah. make sure our, our causeway committee yeah. knows about it. Sure. I'm sure they do already, but I mean just in case, let's make sure that happens. Laney's here and she's she gotcha. under that committee. Okay. Cool. Great, thank you. All right, now is the time for citizen input. Anyone wishing to come forward and speak to anything that is not already on the agenda? If it's on the agenda, you'll have the opportunity to speak to those items as we go through them. Come on down, give us your name and address for the record. All right, my name is Howard Gray. I'm at 1617 Brook Drive. Um, I was just here a couple of days ago, and, mm -hmm. and, and after I spoke, I heard some some uh, explanations that I thought, uh, uh, darn it, I'm going to have to come back and re-explain something just to make sure I make the point. So uh, uh, what I didn't see, and this all deals with the uh, Jerry Lake um, property that you're looking at purchasing and voting on on the 21st of this month. So I've, I've been going through those documents. Um, what I did not see in there was a cost-benefit analysis for that particular purchase. I saw it for the purchase of the uh, um, Doug, Douglas Glass uh, uh, property, but not for the Jerry Lake property. Uh, benefits to buying that property looks like, well, you can, you can launch your kayaks, you can enjoy the view, you can build a pier, um, and you can prevent future construction. So all good things, but what comes along with it is, is a liability in the event that the uh, weir needs to be rebuilt. So uh, that weir, um, is, uh, is older than 35 years, because I had plans for it back in, uh, in 85. Uh, but what I, can't, what I can't seem to find is uh, what anyone has considered about that weir. It doesn't show up in anything. It's like, uh, it's like someone wanted to build a dam. And they went to the planning folks at uh, Pinellas and those guys says, oh, you know, if you want to build a dam, there's a lot of paperwork that comes with that, a lot of engineering and that sort of thing. Yeah, why, why don't you call it a weir? Because <laughs> that sounds benign. Nobody's ever heard of a weir uh, breaking and flooding a town. There's a reason for that. Uh, that's because the news media would say uh, that a dam broke and flooded the town because all weirs are dams. Not all dams are weirs. So just, just, just to make it clear, just calling it a weir doesn't make the problem go away. So, so uh, routine maintenance is required of any kind of a dam. You've got an earthen dam back there. You better maintain that thing. That's, those are problems. I'm familiar with that. Had, had uh, some dams on my dad's farm. Important things to take care of. Um, dam failures impact the structures downstream. We saw what happened on 580 when we had a large rainfall that fell in the watershed of the Jerry Lake. That includes several other uh, ponds in the area as well. Uh, that flooded uh, uh, 580. At the time, I just happened to be there. It looked like it was six, eight inches going across the top of that road. Uh, if you had the dam break at the same time, you'd have probably had a good foot or more of water going across that road. That sweeps cars and people into the creek on the other side. Very dangerous, most likely would kill some people. It has to be taken very seriously. Thank you, Howard. Is my three minutes up? I'll have to come back again. <laughs> Thank no, you. But I, I will just say that uh, we were going to announce it later. We might as well announce it now. We're, we are pulling the purchase off of the next agenda because we're still working through some things. Um, and, and that happened several times, nothing to worry about anybody listening, but that happened several times with the Gladys Douglas property. But the, in addition, I think you might have heard Jorge say that that was a county weir. So we are checking with the county as to who's, because it's my understanding it's their responsibility. 
It is. There is a maintenance agreement. Yeah. As so well. that takes the liability off of us. It makes me feel much better. Thank you. Thank you for bringing it forward. Anyone else wish to come forward and speak to any item not already on the agenda? Okay. Uh, we'll move on to action items. This first item is the first reading of Ordinance 21-29, approving and authorizing the <coughs> execution of a development agreement between the City of Dunedin and Coastal ICF Construction Services and Grant Street Partners for the Dunedin Causeway Hotel, a.k.a. the Jays Hotel, at 491 Causeway Boulevard. Nikki, would you please read that um, ordinance by title only? Ordinance 21-29, an ordinance of the City of Dunedin, Florida, approving and authorizing execution of a development agreement between the City of Dunedin and Coastal ICF Construction Services, Inc. as successor in interest to Eco Seascape Construction Services, Inc. and Grant Street Partners, LLC, and providing for an effective date of this ordinance. Mayor and Commissioners, this has been reading of Ordinance 21-29 on first reading by title only. Thank you, Nikki. I'm going to hold off on getting the ordinance in case there's anything in here anybody wants to change, because it is a development agreement and we ultimately have to approve it. So just in case, I'm just going to wait to do the, the vote at the end, or the motion at the end. Okay. Um, any opening? Nope. Mayor, hand it straight over to Joey. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, Joey. Oh, good evening. Uh, Joseph DePasqua, uh, the Assistant Director of Community Development on behalf of the Community Development Department. And so, uh, yes, this evening we, we'd like to talk to you a little bit about Ordinance 21-29. Uh, I'm um, going to hope we walk you through the staff report as well as a series of exhibits about the property. Um, and then, of course, the applicant um, will, uh, the applicant as well as the Blue Jays, I think, are going to be speaking as well. And Joey, if I can, yes. because there, there had been a number of questions on social media. Um, I think it's really important for anybody watching this to understand that we are not approving the project tonight. This is simply, and I did try to clarify that because it's not quasi-judicial and I could speak to it. It is simply an agreement between us and the company planning to build. It still has to go through all of the normal process of approvals. Design review. Uh, yeah. Yes, so, yes Mayor. Absolutely. So this is, and I do have a slide to kind of point that out, okay. that, there, that this is a, a specific step, step in the process. I just didn't want people to get too far and start tagging and posting and I wanted them to know right from the get-go. Thank you. Understood, understood. Okay, so, so the property we're talking about here is, is located at 491 uh, Causeway Boulevard. So I'm gonna put the exhibits up as I kind of walk through the staff report. Hopefully that'll be helpful for those watching as well. So as you can see, the subject property is located right on the uh, south side of uh, Causeway Boulevard, uh, right before you get to Ward Island. The property, its size is a 0.85 acres, so three, just a little more than three-quarters of an acre, or about 37,000 square feet. It, uh, the property, so I'll, I'll take a step back. The developer has applied for a, um, a design review, and as part of that design review, because of the things they're asking for in the development agreement, they have to do this process first. And so... The, the development agreement is, is ahead of the design review, and we, we just discussed that. The, develop, the ultimate development of the project, which will come through at a later date, and I'll keep reiterating that throughout this so there's no confusion for anybody who happens to be watching, is that the developer wishes to develop a, a three-story, 51-room hotel on the property. And the primary use of the, of the property is going to be for the Toronto Blue Jays, for their spring training and during regular season throughout the year. So following up, a uh, little more familiarity with the site itself. For, for those folks who are familiar, the site right now does have a car wash on it with some ancillary buildings. I've identified those in red. You've got some, vacation, uh, some vacuum stations and a detail center. To the uh, direct west of the property is a vacant lot. We're going to talk a little bit about that as well. It's not a party to tonight's action, but we're going to certainly talk about it. Uh, to the direct west of that is the off-site parking for the Marker 1 Marina. Directly to the east of this property is the Frenchie Stone Crab. Behind it to the south is the Harbor Point Condos. There's a vacant parcel across the street, and then, of course, the Hampton Inn and the Frenchie's Outpost to the, just to the west of that. And then you can see to the far right of the screen is the Causeway Plaza. So this is just a little more zoomed in on the site so everybody can orient with what we're talking about here. 
So here's some street views of the property, just to familiarize again. These were taken, captured by Google in uh, March of this year. You can see you've, you've got a, a, a car wash building with a detail center and the vacuum stations I was referring to. The parcel, uh, the east uh, would be on the left side of the, the screen if you're looking at it. And then the right side would be the west, of, uh, would be facing west. Here is another image. You can see the stone crab building on the far left. You can see the main car wash building and then of course the, the smaller out, out buildings uh, to the right. And I'm just trying to give everybody perspective of what the site looks like today. If the project were to go through, obviously these buildings and everything you're seeing here would be would ultimately demol be demolished, removed off the site and replaced with the hotel. We've also provided a, it was in, all these items were in your backup as well, a boundary survey, the, the, the red annotations are just identifying the structures to again orient folks with it. So the first step we, when we talk about the development agreement, why are we doing a development agreement? And the answer is pretty, pretty simple. The development agreement would not be needed had they not be asking for an additional density, which is allowed under our code. So in this instance, this property has a commercial general land use. Commercial general land use by right allows a certain number of units, 40 units per acre. And then there's an opportunity through a development agreement process to ask for up to 60 units per acre. So the, the increase between 40 and 60 is, is obviously the discretion of the city commission. And so that, that is an allowable within that district. As you can see, the red throughout the, the neighboring area for the most part is all your commercial general. You do have some residential multifamily or residential medium behind it land use. And then you do have resorts facilities medium, which is where the Hampton Inn site is located in that art out parcel um, for a, um, we talked about in the past, <coughs> for a potential for a, uh, for a restaurant at that site. So by way of background, these land use is, is overlaid with a FXM or the form-based medium zoning. You can see that also runs along that, that corridor from Paula Drive uh, as it loops around it. And you do have some FXM, which is the Causeway Plaza. You also have the Walgreens building, the Sheriff Station. So you've got some FXM. Frenchies is FXM, and you have a little bit to the west of there. So that's a pretty predominant zoning. Tourist facility is the green or the TF you're seeing. So for the purposes of the development agreement, going back to allowable density. So again, commercial general, 40 units per acre maximum for temporary lodging. That's what we're talking about here, hotel units. Utilizing the alternate uh, found in the code, you can ask for up to 60. So mathematically, what this site would support is 34 hotel units by right would not need a development agreement um, if they were to choose that path. Obviously, they want to put the 51 units on, which is at 60 units an acre. That's what the property would yield. The other caveat to the conditional, uh, to the need for a development agreement is that the developer has to have that evacuation plan. As we know, the hotel would be sited in an evacuation level A, which means these are the first people that are ordered to evacuate. And the hotel, like any hotel, would have to have a plan to how to get those, those folks out uh, should there be that warning uh, issued here in Pinellas County. And so this is not an uncommon situation. It's throughout Pinellas County. It's a, it's a condition of, of asking for the additional density. The next slide is, it's basically taken right from the development agreement. So you'll see some <coughs> references in there. They're referring to the sections. So as a condition of the development agreement, what is the developer re agreeing to? Well, there's some restrictions. And we'll, I'll walk through those really quickly. Um, it's one of the, of course, the main condition, condition is they're going to build the project. Um, as they go through, they're going to build the hotel project. But the hotel itself needs to be a, a boutique hotel. Florida building, a green building coalition certified no more than 51 rooms on this property uh, for primary use by the Toronto Blue Jays and uh, their, th for, the, um, uh, for the extent of their agreement uh, with the city of Dunedin. The other, uh, another condition would be enhanced landscaping buffers uh, to buffer that residential property. This is a Harbor Point condos directly to the south. Obviously, when you have those adjoining properties, you have sort of the back 
facing the back, you have an opportunity there to buffer that. Uh, outdoor lighting uh, needs to be directed downward. They don't want any disruption from lighting on neighboring properties. Uh, signage has to be of uniform style. The traffic plans have to be uh, configured according to uh, the studies discussed in the development agreement itself. The developer shall, of course, uh, adhere to the evacuation plan that they would execute as a condition of in its exhibit D to the development agreement. Of course, all other code requirements to be met. Uh, developer cannot have a nuisance on the property. There's a comment in uh, a condition in there about the dumpster and trash pickup and to encourage recycling. The building materials and the heights and the style have to be consistent with what's in the development agreement, the architectural renderings, which are exhibit to it. And then finally, the last agree agreed to a condition is the off-site improvement. And that is another crosswalk that you see, um, I think, familiar with the site, you won't see it in the images here, but there is a crosswalk where it says Causeway Boulevard in white, just to the, just to the, uh, to the east of that, that little hatch. It would be something similar to that, but in the area of Michael Place. And because the final location is not 100% known, wherever the county would approve it being their road, the developer would design and permit and install that uh, as a condition of the development agreement. So here's a snapshot of the proposed site plan. This is the, this is the ground floor level. It's, it's proposed to be ground floor parking with two floors of rooms above. But you can see the building footprint. You've got access coming in off causeway, sort of looping through the site. They've imposed a uh, bus onto the property, so you can kind of see how the, the players will be transported on and off the site daily. You can see there's also a pool shown on the property as well. This is exhibit B to the development agreement. Then we provided the most recent architectural renderings. The, uh, again, this, when they come back through for a design review, this is the style in which the, the building has to be substantially like. It's a coastal vernacular style. The top elevation is looking at it from the west or if you were standing at this, the French East Stone Crab. The lower elevation would be staring at it from Causeway Boulevard looking uh, to the south. As you can see, you've got all the elements of that coastal vernacular. And then the second rendering would be, again, looking from the east. So this would be looking from the vacant lot or the marker one parking lot towards the building. And then from the Harbor Point condos. And I would point out that along the uh, roof of the lower one, those are all solar panels. The building is going to be uh, solar. I know the applicant and we'll, we'll speak to that in, in more detail, but that is the solar arrays across the roof. I've also provided the, so the perspective renderings, both the aerial view and the, the perspective renderings are the building prior to the latest redesign that you just saw in the perspective, um, the proposed architectural style. However, these do give you a very good idea of masking and scale and how the <coughs> building will fit in because the footprint of the building did not change. The, the, basically, they changed the architectural look of the building by changing fenestration, but didn't necessarily change anything about the size and mass of it. So these slides will give you some idea of how it will sit on the site, and you can see it there in place of what would be uh, the car wash today. Here's a rendering looking south, and you see Frenchies in the foreground, and then the, the ho proposed hotel and the Harbor Point condos uh, behind it. This would be looking from the west to the east. Again, you see the parking lot for marker one in the foreground. You see the hotel beyond the vacant lot and then the Harbor Point condos again, the L-shaped building uh, or more of a J-shaped building here uh, to the right of the proposed hotel. And one last view looking north. And so the Harbor Point condos would be in the foreground in this picture with uh, Paula Drive. 
then the hotel, the J Hotel, and then Causeway Boulevard. And this is an older aerial. The Campton Inn is not on this site. This is probably coming off of maybe Google Earth or the bird's eye view. But the Hampton Inn would be sitting in front of the building, uh, the Macedonia condos on that property directly across the street. Causeway Plaza would be to the right. And then this is the east facing facade. Again, the Hampton Inn isn't shown here, but the Causeway Plaza would be in the bottom right. You see Frenchies beyond the vacant large lot that has the Hampton Inn on it today. And then you see the hotel directly across the street and beyond the vacant parcel parking lot for marker one and to the left the harbor point condos you can see a three-story building sort of sitting there the harbor point condos i believe is a two-story building so here here's the slide i was referring to this is talks about because this process has gone on for quite some time probably a little bit longer than what you're used to you may recall uh, August of last year, and I did provide, we did provide the minutes in the backup. On August 6th of last year, the City Commission authorized the City Manager to negotiate this development agreement. Very shortly <coughs> thereafter, the applicant and the Blue Jays started negotiations across the street. And you're familiar with that process. That ran its course earlier this year, and they've decided to go back and re-engage in the process that we're in today. So they re-engaged with the city manager, taking the lead on the negotiations, of course, the city attorney drafting the legal documents. And that, that was brought to the LPA uh, on September 8th of this year. The LPA did review the proposed development agreement and the, uh, the conditions the developer has agreed to and did recommend unanimously to approve the development agreement and the ordinance. So the next step is first reading, which we're having this evening. The next step after that would be the second reading, which is scheduled for October 21st. After that, if, if successfully the ordinance is adopted, you would execute the uh, final, do the, the city's execution of the documents already been executed by the applicant. And within 14 days of full execution, that would be recorded. Then step six is, is really what we're talking about. Then the applicant would start the design review process meaning they would go th back through ARC because the de design has changed since they originally went through early last year, followed by LPA, followed by two uh, hearings in front of the city commission as any uh, design review process would, would occur. And then finally, some time frames. So I wanted to, I know this has come up with previous uh, development agreements on how, what are the time frames? So there's two real time frames in the development agreement. The first one is start of construction, which needs to occur within 18 months of the effective date of the development agreement. So that gives the applicant time after the development agreement is, if it's approved and executed, to then go through that design review process followed by the permitting process for the hotel itself. Assuming everything is successful, they have 18 months to get started on construction. And they have essentially 36 months from the execution of the development agreement to complete the project. So you'd be looking at if, if the development agreement was be recorded in the next 30 days, you'd be looking at completion of the project in 36 months or less. I'm gonna defer to the applicant to talk about the use. Obviously the Blue Jays will talk about the use primarily, how they plan to do that. There's a lot of questions at LPA about that. The staff recommendation is to approve ordinance 21-29 and the negotiated development agreement. And with that, I'd be glad to answer any questions of staff. Okay, so let's go to questions for our team before uh, Doug gets up and does his presentation. Um, I'll start at this end. John, any I questions? No, I have no questions. Uh, Deborah? Um, you know, uh, there was a lot of discussion, so I want to be sure that I'm asking this at the right time because there is another parcel, and I said, thought you said you were going to discuss I'm that. I'm sorry, you're right. I'm sorry. Okay, so I, I want to be very clear on what happens if an extra parcel is added and you started a development agreement with a specific parcel here, then what triggers and at, at what point does does it trigger a master development plan and exactly how that goes legally? 
Oh, thank you, Commissioner. I apologize. I, I was going to mention that because it did. It's in the staffing, and it did come up at LPA. So, so the developer, the, and then they'll speak in more detail to their obviously their business dealings. But from a staff perspective, they've identified that they've put that property under contract. The property to the west, it's about 0.41 acre, 0 0.40 acres, and. I guess the best way it's been explained to us is they're still in their due diligence period and they're going to, and, but, but from a city perspective, they, the process would essentially start over with that parcel, whether it's part of a unified site where we amend this process at some point in the future or it's handled as a separate development agreement. If the request is to build a hotel or an addition to this hotel or a, a separate part, then they're gonna ask for the additional density it's in an evacuation zone as well, clearly. They would have to go down the same process. It would be request to negotiate. And, amend, and even an amendment is treated the same as a new development agreement, the way our code reads. So if that property, were, if they were to move forward with the purchase and decide to design something, and yes, we're ready to do that, essentially they would start the process over with that site included with this site. So more than likely, that would happen at a later date if that if that due diligence period runs out. And I'll certainly let the developer speak that in greater detail. The reason we brought it out at staffing is because the developer was very forthright, forthright with us telling us that they've put it under contract and they're doing that right now. They're trying to figure out, does this, does this work for us? Um, so at the moment, the 0.85 acres is the only parcel in play. However, if it were to be, if that property were to be acquired, a unified design review site and probably an amendment to development agreement would be the most orderly way to handle that. that that's an assumption on my part, but I, I think that's probably a fair assumption. Okay, so it would come back for a... Uh, can I add something that can yes, clarify? 11.5 of this agreement mm -hmm. states that if that property is acquired, you will come back and negotiate a master site within 10 days. Not, the amendment won't be done within 10 days. As Joey commented, the process under the code and the process under the statute is the amendment goes through the same process of a development agreement, but that's an 11.5 of this development agreement. So there is a trigger if that property is acquired at any point in time, not to, no, I think Joey mentioned, well, if this deal goes through, no, this, this agreement for its duration, if that neighboring property is acquired, would trigger a negotiation of a master plan for the entire site okay and so but I, I'm I guess and I realize you know we're, we're looking at one parcel tonight and basically you're asking us for the density that's what you really want with this development agreement but still uh, you said it was what point four uh, this other little property I mean that's I not that's a lot so I guess would it affect more density? Uh, I'm just, I mean, I'm curious. So the, the density on that parcel is the same as this. So it's 40 units an acre by right, essentially, up to 40 units per acre, and you have to ask for up to 60. So it's the same, it's the, it just, the, except the it's smaller. Except, yeah, it's 0.4. This is 0.85, right? Correct. So they'd have a right for 16 units on that? Yes. Okay, so again, I'm just, um, so they start this project and then say they acquire, if they choose and it happens and they acquire the extra property, you have an amend, you have a, an agreement for this, a development agreement for this particular parcel. And then if they acquire it, it opens the entire thing up to be looked at as a master designed plan. Is that correct? Is that correct, Nikki? Am I saying it correct? correct? The parties agree that they will negotiate a master plan for the entire site, including the adjacent property. And that happens. That's triggered. Right. Okay. Thank you. And at, at that point, it goes back through the whole chain of command. Hmm? You know, it goes back through. Uh, It'll come to you first for authority to negotiate that to amendment. Negotiate and just as we did before, mm -hmm. and then it goes. Now it comes for execution. Then it goes to staff. Then it goes to LPA. Yeah. Then it comes to you. Right. For two readings. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I just there seemed to be a lot of confusion with that, even at the LPA. Well, if 
no offense to anybody, it just kind of doesn't make sense. It's why, why not just get the property and do the whole thing at once rather than do this twice so that we know what we're looking at because we have no idea whether they're going to be asking for density bonuses on the other one, but we're trying to, but yet we have to make that decision here. I, it, but I want to hear what Doug's presentation say, is, so I don't want to go off on a tangent, but I, it, it's very difficult for us mm -hmm. to vote for a piece with not seeing the whole picture, I think. But anyway, questions? Well, thank you. And so just to piggyback on Commissioner Kynes' thought process, uh, right now with the density increase, they're looking at 51 units. But by right, they get 34, and with that other piece, they get 16, which would be 50 units. And so, so if this is approved tonight, just so I understand the process, and then they're able to purchase that other property, the agreement comes back to us, we can rescind that density bonus. Correct? I don't, I, don't, I, don't know. I don't, I mean, at that point, you're authorizing, a, you're, you're talking about a negotiating a, a totally different agreement over a different property. But I thought we were combining the properties. If that's the intent, so if they it opened up if the they whole buy the adjacent property, and they and it triggers that we will negotiate a master plan for the entire site. I can't tell you that that master plan is because they're asking for this density or that. I don't. I don't know that. We'll have to ask the applicant that. But at that time, you would consider the first thing the commission would do is consider authority to negotiate that am an amendment, and you would have to receive a request that just like your request for a development agreement states what they plan to do and what they want to do on the property so you would get your density counts at that point whether it's that they're trying to add on 14 more or not increasing the density at all i can't i don't i don't know that we, we know. can answer that i think that the applicant may need to answer some of that well i guess it's more of a, a legal question i suppose i mean it's so that if that if this agreement comes back to us it's, it, it's for an amendment right. to, to, to change it, but we can't reduce it. We, we aren't renegotiating the entire agreement. It's negotiating a master plan for the entire site. So yeah. it could be. Okay, so we could rescind it then. It, well, mm. you, I don't think so. I mean, if you I'm using the right. 17 extra units of density, right? Only just the master plan as it looks. We wouldn't. I don't know what you're rescinding at that point. Nothing exists. Well, this doesn't grant. The this bonus. doesn't. The d development agreement never grants an entitlement to do. This does not give density of 60 units on that. I mean, it could if everything then goes through site planning and all the other conditions of development, but it does right. not give that. So if this agreement gets amended, then it can be amended. I don't. I'm sorry. Well, I guess, because my I guess my thought is is right now with the density. The reason the density is. They're going to be looking for a maximum of 51 units as it stands now. On the one parcel. Right. And actually, I don't know. I guess I need to clarify that. Is do we know how many units they're looking at? Are they looking at 51 or? Because I'm just going with the numbers. And I'm wondering if, if 51 is what they're looking for. And we say yes and grant them the density bonus to give them the 51 units. But now the other property comes into play. And they might be able to get at least 50 that's the difference. without the density. I, that, that's, that's the difference is that you're not granting it in this agreement. It is an idea and it's a plan and it's something to say if this product gets built, then these are the parameters for it. I mean, I know you are under the context of your code, but it's not, it's, it's not the mechanism that gives them the bonus. The, the development agreement is giving it, Well, it's the mechanism by which they get the bonus, but I think you're, we're, we're, we're parsing out now that if you have a finalized development agreement and then you go in to amend that development agreement, that is not, you're not taking anything away. You're looking at a totally different site now and how it's going to work and what it's going to do. Does that make sense? I'm... So it would still be, I mean, you're not rescinding. You're not rescinding anything that. because they never got to the point of building that anyway. Now you've, you've at most gotten to a point of triggering in the agreement a requirement to negotiate a master site plan at this point. So does that make sense? You're not... It's so not are you an entitlement. With the amendment, it washes everything away, and we're starting it's, totally I new. 
No density bonus is on the table. It has to be negotiated again. Well, I'm it sorry, It would Jeff, be. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I can't say what their request to negotiate would be, but it, what it would be is that if you're not, the entitlement comes in once they start building or doing things on the site. If that hasn't happened, and instead what you're triggering is an amendment to this agreement, you've and not that, actually yes. given 50, you've given 51 units on this piece, but now it's expanding out and that's adding in 14 more things. So my point is that the city, I don't know that you can say what they're going to ask for from those 14 units. I don't think you can, we can say what the staff would look at just as they did when looking at this density bonus about what the site could support, what it would be physically and all of the technical components that go into that. So it's not like, oh, we've well, got 51 and now we know we're just adding to it. It's a renegotiation to master plan the site. So that's what you'd look at. And then to Commissioner Freeney's point, yeah, they'd have more land or and Commissioner Kynes made this point too, they'd have more land. So you multiply that, it's by a higher number. Instead of 0.85, it's now by 0.85 plus 0.4 or whatever. So that's what you're looking at at that point in time. 0.89. I don't know if that, I mean, it's a lot of hypotheticals in that, but I don't know if that makes sense. So when Mr. Anderson comes up, I think he'll tell us what his intention is. That seems to so be the best way to figure out. him rather than yeah. speculate? But my, my but it's obviously legal answer to your question us. is the, um, the agreement doesn't, unless they, if they go build that project and they have, and there's, by the way, a, a number of other contingencies in there and design and all the other site plan stuff that has to happen. That's why to the mayor's point at the beginning of this discussion, this is not a proof. This is not the final approval for the project. This is setting up the frameworks and the parameters on the development that may happen. So they don't actually have that density until They've built, built it until it's built, and then that. If you come back and you're negotiating an amendment, there's all these other things that are coming up that it sounds like you might get some more inc insight on. But there's no entitlement to the density until it's built. There's no entitlement to the project by this agreement. That's actually specifically in every development agreement. They still have to go through all the other approvals for the project before they can build the agreement. Okay. Just to follow no, up, no. I don't want to cut. So. Okay, so does that mean until we approve the design, design review? And Let's site say, plan and, yeah. Okay, so, okay, well, I'll just say the design plan. We see the design plan, it, it, it's too crammed. It's just too crammed and no design's gonna make it look right. Does that mean we can just say no? It doesn't fit. Everything in a development agreement is always subject to your, to, to your, develop, to to your approval process. If not, it's contract zoning. The city can't give site plan approval by a contract. So they have to public art fund, design review and approval, any development owners, building and infrastructure, utility permits, They you still have to do all that. Erosion control approval, site plan approval, construction plan approval, concurrency determinations, SWIFMA, DP approval. Like you, you still have to get all that. You don't just get it by doing an agreement. So yes, if the site plan doesn't get approved, if any of those other things don't happen, they don't get to go, what, but you approve the development agreement. Doesn't that mean I get the site plan? That's not how it works. But, and Jeff, oh, I'm sorry, just no, one more. No, no, no. Okay, but is it, because you know, there's always this, what you can reasonably deny so if we all look at the site plan or the, the design review at the end and say, it's too crammed, no. Is that, well, you is that a legitimate legal process. reason to say no? That would be a subsequent quasi-judicial hearing and I would tell you to base your decision based on the evidence that you heard in that hearing. So I can't tell you, oh yeah, you've got a basis to deny a design review that I'm, we're not looking at. But the answer to your question is yes, through all of those approvals that have to be done, site plan, design review, you still follow your same process and if and if it and if it doesn't get approved, then the project doesn't happen. Does that make sense? So you've not approved it, does, it by but doing I don't know the development agreement question. doesn't hold you to the approval. And you I get still that. have yeah. I get that. But we see a design and we basically just say it's too cramped. Is that a legitimate legal reason to say no? Well, but I think we're getting off a topic. We we're are, because you're asking me to give an opinion well, about... But it does have to do with the, our, it, just what you said. 
It'd be so easy if we had both pieces of property. Well, but the, po the well, point and that's it, why I kind of want to wait till Mr. Anderson comes up and makes his presentation so he can tell us exactly what we're going to do because yeah, we might right. be worrying about things we yep. don't need to. Right. And, uh, and thank you, Mayor. I think well, that sounds like I'm, questions that's, then, that's reasonable. I'm happy oh, I, I knew there might be questions for Joey. So, yeah. I mean, <laughs> poor Joey. I, mean, I do. do you, if, <laughs> can, can I, well, sidebar, or we'll pin that. Um, Joey, um, this is FXM zoned, correct? Yes, it is. And uh, there's a lot of also TF around there as well. Have we, and let me know if this is, I'm allowed to ask this, and have we made these changes for any other developments currently in that causeway area, whether it was FXM or TF? Uh, which have we given density bonuses to anybody? The only one, the only uh, project that I'm aware of in my time in the city where, where the additional density was, was granted as part of a conditional use excuse me, a development agreement was the Hampton Inn. Okay. Yeah, and that was, that was the, you know, um, that has a different land use. So it's, um, by memory, it's re resort, I have, it's on the mass resorts facilities medium, and it has a base land use, and then you, re you can request up to 60 units an acre, and I believe they did. I think they requested and were approved through a development agreement up, up to 90, and they ended up building 88. That's the only project that I'm aware of. And there's only three land uses in the city that allow the, the, the request. And, and I say not allow the use, but allow the request to you as the city commission. CG, um, resorts, facilities, medium, and I believe commercial recreation are the only three that allow the request to happen. But that is the only one I'm aware of in the time I've been with the city. Okay. Uh, do you know the question I have? Thank you. Commissioner, for any questions for Joey? Uh, I sure don't want to well, ask any more, but, um, but I do think, uh, to be fair <laughs> to myself and others, uh, this is why LPA struggled. They voted unanimously, but they passed it on to us, but they Catholic struggled struggle. with this very issue, no, and the I, buck I does know. stop here. So um, let me see. Um, one question I, I did have, um, the exact height of the building compared to other buildings, uh, you know, I guess uh, the one behind it, Harbor, what would what, you know what the comparative height is? I don't. I don't. This is a this is a proposed three story building. Uh, and that's what the one behind it is, isn't it? Harbor Point three story. Yeah. It might. I thought it was two story. It might be three, but if it, it's an older building, it might have. Uh, it's might probably lower because it does floor. seem. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, because there are points that and Doug, I'm looking at Doug, and he'll answer some of this, but there are points that actually looks like it. it you know, gives the illusion of four stories. So I was just curious on what the height differences are. So, okay. Um, nothing right now. I think it's good to wait, probably. I have some questions for Joey. Um, well, and it might be maybe for Jennifer. In the development agreement, we have 36 months till end of construction, which is three years. And normally, and I might just need to walk this through out loud here. Normally in our code, I think it's what, 18 months, two years for construction, right? Isn't that so what commence? From permitting? I, we do 18. have, I, I, you might be referring to the design review expiration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the design review expiration in the code has to do with once you've granted that design review, they have 12 months to get their permits uh, in hand. And then they can, there's a one-time request, they can get an extension of six months. So it can be 18 months to get permits in hand. From we don't, have, that, a, but we that, don't have a deadline for construction. It's just design review. It's when the design review expires. Then, so that's the design review expiration is the 12 with the 12 months with a six month extension. It's and just then 30, under construction, we do have a table that based on the value of the project and how long it needs to take to complete. Because it just 36 months sounds like a long time. It would be 36 months from. And I understand review. design yeah. review and all of that's got to go through it, and that that whole thing could take six months. I get all of that. It just seemed like a long, a long time that we were allowing for the process to go. So, but this is what you all are okay with. Yeah. I would suggest also that that Mr. Anderson and Mr. Wilson will. Um, express as they have to staff that okay. there's an urgency to get this thing done. no i understand that yeah. that's why when i saw 36 months i was yeah. like huh okay and 
for the density bonus that is described in the development agreement, what we get back for that density bonus is the things you mentioned, LEED certified, extra solar, solar extra buffering, et cetera, et cetera. The crosswalk. Cro and the crosswalk. So by getting those things, that's why we're offering the density bonus. Because, I mean, usually you don't offer a density bonus just because. You have to get something in return. So I just want to be real clear on what we're getting in return. Well, I don't want to speak for the city manager, but the way I would characterize it is yes. In, 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 as part of the negotiation, requesting the maximum density in exchange, there's some off-site improvements as well as some design improvements and some architectural uh, superior architectural that we're looking for in exchange. It's probably the best way. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would add to that also, Mayor, uh, the operation of the hotel, the 25-year license agreement, the decrease in traffic because it is a hotel with a with a transportation plan um, that is um, that is associated with it. So, I think that that the long-term use um, of the hotel itself is certainly. I think we need to put that in play here. Mm -hmm. um, What happens, and I think this would be legal. So, I mean, I know they call it a hotel, but it really isn't a hotel. I'm not sure why we're calling it a hotel, but I guess so that it ends up having the opportunity if it's empty at one point of renting it, right? Okay. Um, so we have a 25 year agreement with the Jays. What happens after 25 years? Well, that's the, that's the commitment that they're required to keep it operating to in the um, agreement under 4.4.1. So what happens after 25 years? They have a hotel with 51 units that doesn't need to primarily be used anymore by the Toronto Blue Jays Major League Baseball Club. Maybe. So, okay, so yeah, maybe. So Joey, Maybe, yeah, that's 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 yeah. the, so, so Joey that's George what's freed up at that point. Joey in time. and George, when they go through this, <clears throat> the required parking that they, when you get to design review and you go through all of that, is is going to be for a hotel, not for a non-car hotel, right? Because right. we're not we don't want we're not trying to set ourselves up for failure 25 years from now, right? The parking requirement will be the standard parking appropriate for a hotel. There's a calculation for the rooms, there's a calculation for the meeting space, and that's how it's been calculated. There's no, there's no, there's been no discount, there will be no discount offered in exchange for the way they're going to operate the hotel, which is certainly unique, but no, from a design okay. standpoint. You'll see, yep. if it goes to design review, you'll see a parking table that will, will delineate all that. Mayor, could I just say, add one thing? Yeah. And even if it was a regular hotel today, it still de decreases the traffic count on the causeway, correct? I don't know that it decreases it, but it's really de minimis. It was, it was just a handful of trips difference between the car wash use and the proposed hotel if it were to operate like, an, like any hotel. Okay, thank it was, you. It was really, I don't want to say it was less because I don't okay. know that definitively. But basically the same. But it was about de minimis, yes. Thank you, Mayor. Sorry. Um, all right, I'm going to... Hold off the rest of my questions until I hear, until we hear from uh, Mr. Anderson. So come on down. <laughs> <laughs> what a lead up. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor, Good evening. Commissioners, City Manager. I'm Doug Anderson, 1413 Bayshore Boulevard, Dunedin. So I've been taking notes um, as we've gone through and listened to this, and um, I think that. If, if you went back and looked at the planning process and what we had to do to try and create this facility for the Blue Jays, it might make a little bit more sense. Because I understand and agree that it's a bit confusing to you tonight with what we are asking of you. But, you know, we started this process in January of 2020, and we located, uh, we did a very thorough search of the city of Dunedin, and it was the Toronto Blue Jays firm desire that they wanted to be in the city of Dunedin with this facility. So when we look for land that could possibly meet those needs, 
and was zoned in a way that could be have this kind of facility built on it, um, there's not much. You know, we're kind of a victim of our own success in that we have hardly any land available in the city to develop, especially zoned the correct, the correct way. So we went through that process. We um, went to D DRC, went through that. We went through two readings of the Architects Review Committee and got a building fully approved by the Architects Review Committee in um, the mid, uh, late summer of last year. So we came to the commission and uh, requested that increase in density, and the commission agreed to allow the city manager, they gave, excuse me, the city attorney, gave the city attorney the authority to enter into negotiations on a development agreement. During that time, the uh, whole issue with the site in front of the Hampton Inn came up, and I want, I want to assure you that had we known what the commitments were to the city by that particular owner prior to that, I wouldn't have spent a dime or a day of my time on that because I understand those commitments and those commitments must be honored. So we went back to the car wash site, but during that process, we had designed a pretty nice looking building to go in front of the Hampton. In our opinion, it was much nicer looking than what we had already been previously approved by the Architects Review Committee. So it's coastal molecular, which is, is appropriate <coughs> for that site. So we went back and we didn't change the layout of the building. We didn't change the parking. We didn't change the dumpster location. We didn't change the pool. We didn't change one single square footage of what had previously been approved by ARC. But we, had, we adapted that coastal vernacular look to the elevations of the building that we were proposing all along. And that's because we knew that the Architects Review Committee gave us guidance that that's what the city would like to have on the causeway. So in the development agreement that we did, the old design that was approved had balconies on the rear that faced um, Harbor, the Harbor Point condominiums. So we eliminated those be, for privacy reasons and increased greatly the landscaping to the rear of the building. The, the reason we're asking for the 51 rooms, the 51 rooms still doesn't get the Blue Jays where they need to be. Their requirement for rooms is higher than that and um, uh, it, in, in congen you know, as this, as this process went on, we tried for almost a year, um, a little over a year, almost 13 months to try and purchase that .4 acres to the west. And um, we got uh, right to the altar twice and uh, our partners backed out. And uh, so we just kept trying. And I um, uh, told the commission in May when we had our hearing about the development agreement to Hampton Insight, that we were still trying to get that under contract. With that 0.4 acres, I'm gonna be honest with you, we would ask for an increase in density for that 0.4 acres, just like we're asking for an increase of density on the 0.86 acres that we have today. And the reason for that is the Blue Jays have some needs for a meeting space, a fair amount of meeting space with a warming kitchen. Uh, it's about 2,400 square feet. and they really need to have all 75 rooms that could be built on that site to meet their needs under certain times of the year. We have um, um, ability to give them rooms at, a couple, at, at one other place, um, but it would, it would give them the opportunity not to have to go to the open market outside of Dunedin to satisfy what their room requirements would be. There are certain times of the year where they just need that many more rooms. So uh, we, that's, that's why we changed the design. I, I, wanted, I wanted, because we're under such a time crunch with trying to get them a facility, we wanted to try and not muddy the waters between, because we didn't have that other piece under contract, that's why we pressed down the road here with the development agreement that we negotiated with the city attorney, because we didn't want to delay the process. Our thought process was, if we were fortunate enough to get that other piece under contract, we would then come back through the, through the process to get that building, that extra building approved. We didn't want to hold up the process on the 51 rooms because we have to have them in the building in early 2023, and they've already adjusted their agreement with us by a year, mostly because of COVID, and, and that slowed everything down in 2020. But um, it, it seems like that has done nothing but confuse things 
So in anticipation of you asking some of these questions, I did bring some layouts of what Let's it would see. look like. It, with your permission, I'll Thank come you, forward. And that would be good. <laughs> yeah, I did ask Jennifer to give him a call because I knew this was going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, what, can we, um, I, I, Sue or Justin, does our overhead camera work? <laughs> there it is. There it is. Doug, if you could just put it in between the uh, the blue. Can someone help him figure out where he has to put it? Yeah. Well, last time we wanted to use it, it didn't work, or it didn't it didn't zoom, it didn't I don't know. How's that? Can can you see that? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So. Doug, I'm sorry. If you will, if you could hand those to the clerk, she'll hand them out for the city commission, so they can hand them. Yeah, that's them. fine. Yeah. Uh, I, Thank I, you. I'm going to use somebody's not going to get one because I'm using. This that's one. fine. I've seen it. So. I made five copies for this evening. So what you see there is you see our original plan at the car wash site, which was 50. What we were applying for with this development agreement, which allowed 51 rooms. What you see to the left of that is what we would consider, um, for lack of a better term, probably an annex to the hotel on that uh, 0.4 acres that is immediately to the west. And this page just shows the parking layout. And by the way, um, to, to address the parking, we have planned the parking as if it was a full operational hotel with no discount for the Toronto Blue Jays not having cars. So if it ever did revert to a hotel, it meets all the parking requirements for a full up hotel. Same thing with the traffic study. When we did the traffic study, we took no discount for the fact that they were gonna be using buses. We put that as a full operating hotel. And the traffic, the, the traffic study came out, it was two operations a, a day different than the car wash. So it, it really was de minimis. Okay. It really wasn't much different. Um, we would be asking for no further, we would be asking for no additional curb cuts. We'd be asking for no additional right of ways. We'd still come in with the buses here and circle and out. <coughs> um, this next page, um, this is certainly not in concrete. This is our, this is our first stab at what we think would work for the Blue Jays. And it gives you it gives you the layout of of the uh, main two buildings that house the that house the players, and then the, the the addition gave us a little bit of an option to because we can't exceed a room count. The most we could ever achieve if we renegotiated the development agreement would be 75 rooms, and that's taking the 60 rooms per acre and and dividing that over 1.25 acres. So we, we laid out and made a couple bigger rooms um, because there's gonna be some staff that I know would want bigger rooms. They've already let us know that. So that's why you see that. Uh, you'll notice at the back of that building is approximately 2,000 square feet meeting room for the Blue Jays. And this would also incorporate about a 300 square foot warming kitchen so that they can provide the catering on the, four, the three or four nights a week that they, that they provide evening meals for all their players. This again, just the, the next floor. Okay, the next floor and uh, let's try that. that's why, yeah, that's, that's why. Um, the next floor, uh, just some um, offices for the hotel and, and more rooms. And then this is that coastal vernacular look that you saw when we were looking at the Hampton Insight. And this is what was approved by one meeting of the Architectural Review Committee. We didn't go to the second re meeting of the Architectural Review Committee because the commission gave us um, strong direction that they weren't going to approve that being built on that site. So we, we dropped that at that time. But we took the good points and we took the value of the, that coastal vernacular look and transmitted it over to the building that we have on the car wash site. Building uh, achieves the Florida Green Building Coalition highest platinum award for efficiency, and it's 100% solar powered. It has 185 kW solar array, which will cover all the electrical needs that we have. And um, the last one is just a couple other uh, illustrations. The bottom one is what you would see from the west 
from the marker one parking lot. So we achieved a, a couple of balcony rooms there with, with covered balconies that would, uh, it's a, uh, an enhanced upgraded room. But those are very small in count. So our intention was not to confuse things. Our intention was not to try and delay the 51 room project. Um, we are going to buy the land. Uh, we couldn't, as we really got into it, myself and, and my partners, we couldn't really get the hotel built um, without having that extra land for staging for the first two portions of the building. And then we could build the annex building it, for lack of a better term, from the back forward. So that's how we had planned on staging our materials and planned on being able to have enough space to work. It's a tight site. It's a tight site and it's a, a bit of a challenge. But our intention was not to confuse. Our intention was to try and get the 51 rooms approved and underway so that we could deliver them to the Blue Jays in the spring of 2023. And then hopefully we would go through the approval process of the additional building and have it follow behind the, the main building. So that, that's, that's what we were trying to do. We weren't trying to confuse anything. So Mr. Anderson, I think, again, on behalf of the commission, because I've listened to what everybody said, but I remember what we talked about the last time you were here. And what we said was, A, we didn't want you on the north side and we wanted you on the south side given the use right. and that we wanted Benedict to, by the way, will somebody please follow up on what's happening with that restaurant and on Benedict's property. Oh. Um, but we, and, and I myself encouraged you to purchase that property because I knew you needed the meeting space and you know, why not do it right? But when I did that, I think along with my colleagues, we all envisioned that you were gonna come back because what we had originally seen was this jam-packed piece of property. And we thought, okay, if you came back and master planned the whole property with the other piece, that it might not be so jam-packed and you could get some of the other things that you wanted. That's a very high level of looking at it. I'm not an architect or a designer or a planner or anything like that. And maybe that assumption on our part wasn't realistic, but I, I do believe that's what we were all thinking. We, that we were gonna come back with one big master plan. Um, because the way it stands now, we're going to be in the same situation as we are, as we were with Benedict, except better terms. We, and you heard what I said in the last meeting, we approved that hotel set far so back, set so far back because there was a restaurant coming that is not there. Right. And so I think we are very leery now of not having a fully master plan thing. I mean, what if you come back and we approve this and you say, no, I'm gonna do townhomes. I'm doing something completely different, has nothing to do with the Jays, which you own it, you have every right to do that, but you know, there's all kinds of things that can happen here. And, and I do think we have some protections, but it just felt like a lot of extra work for you guys. I understand there was extra work in master planning. What you did here is just took what you already had and changed the architecture, which I think sounds somewhat simple. Um, I just feel like I think it's hard for us to make a decision on something where we don't see the whole picture. If, if, we, if we could have bought that land at the same time we bought the car wash land, where we could have come to you with one project, yes, that would have been the best and easiest way of doing it. Because it took so long to finally get that under contract, uh, if, if we could approve the entire project at once, and not have to go through the delays of incorporating this into it so that we could still deliver the building for them in April of 2023, I'd be more than happy to stipulate that that's exactly what we're gonna do. I just don't know how long the negotiation would take on changing the development agreement that we have before us this evening to include this piece. Is it because of the time you've thought, I understand you're only under contract, but you seem pretty confident you're buying it. Yes, ma'am. You don't seem concerned about that? No, ma'am. Okay. So I guess is the time that it would take you to actually do the plans for both pieces of property so we could, I mean, if that's truly your intention, I guess I don't understand why we're going through this without seeing all of that. Well, we were told, and, 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 I'll, and I'll, I think the explanation, if you look at it from our standpoint, 
we were told that because we are now proposing this addition at some later point in the future, um, we would have to go all the way back through the process again. And it's been consistent, that message from staff, that that is the way it would have to be. If we could incorporate this right now and, and take away all those other steps, we would be extremely happy. Well, the way that you can do that is by having that owner that you're purchasing from sign off and, and authorize you to negotiate the development agreement for the whole site. Yeah, we, or we, we can close. We're in, we're in a position to close on the property right away. So we, we could do that. That, I, I that just, would be another way to do it too, but that's that. But I just wanted to to know there's there's often development agreements where someone might not own the property yet, but they get permission from the owner when the person's in their diligence stage. Because some people buy property just with a with an intent to redevelop it, so the contract will be for through an entire diligence period that might include getting a development agreement, getting development entitlements before. A property even closes so yeah. that's not yeah. something that's off the table for we have done that before on other yeah and does remember. that shorten the process it just makes it to what you know it just it, keeps this same one open and it's not that it shortens it it just makes it so that the part of the reason why the city commission why you were in this box to begin with is because you were going from an an, an authorization from summer of last year and this was the box so you can't extend the box without asking for authority, and and you need all of the owners of the of the property to be in the development agreement. And at the time we were doing this one, they said maybe it was the situation has changed since then because it was maybe still early on in the process. And um, also, you only had a, an authority to negotiate a development within this box. So if now there is a willing owner on the other side that is that I, I, I I'm just pointing it out but that could be an option of how it can happen at the same time okay so mm -hmm. for without going again, back all the way to the all the without steps. it being triggering as, as some amendment after the closing if you if the closing is that imminent see but you, you just said a little while ago it doesn't shorten the process no, what I was saying was it's not. It's less complicated, is what you're saying. It's more. Cohesive. It would. It would be much simpler it's than that than, than doing this development agreement and then going and back and amending back. that development agreement. Yeah. That's two of the same processes. So there's two pieces here yeah. that I think we're all or most of us are concerned about. It's not seeing the big picture. I mean, I I understand what you're looking for here. But I think what we were hoping is that it would be a better blended site, and maybe it won't be, because of the way the entry, the entry and exit is. I, I don't know. You know, I this is not creating a development is not my forte, so I I just don't know. But <coughs> I think we were looking for a more, more co cohesive site, maybe a little less dense. I'm not saying less units, but just spread out is what we were looking for, which is why we were encouraging you to purchase the property. In addition, and I'm sure you all have thought about it, but hadn't asked it yet, I'm very concerned about two different pieces of property. I want to make sure it's all together and that this, this little piece over here doesn't become something different. We, we would be happy to stipulate to that. Um, but I think we also want to make sure that when you're building, that we don't drive the poor neighbors out there crazy by having one big construction thing over here for two years and then another two years on this over here. You know, and so that's got to all get worked through because we don't want construction going there forever. What we, so again, it's, if it's all together, that won't happen. Yeah, in, in our discussion with staff, um, when, when we started this process and back to the car wash site, um, we we had we had addressed that we had addressed that very point, and we would like to be able to deliver both buildings at the same time to the yeah. Blue Jays. So, but what I was told is, let's get through this um, development agreement, see if we can get the increased density to get the process started, and then we immediately, as soon as next week, we're going to start the design review with the with the additional um, addition to the hotel to get that process going so that we could hopefully have that all approved by late spring, you know, between the LPA and between city commission, between ARC. 
and DRC, it, it takes. But the thing about going through design review, that's assuming, if it, you know, that's assuming that we're okay with the way it's crammed into the one piece versus looking at the whole piece and then it might get spread out just a little bit. I can, I can tell you that. You, you know, and I know you can still do that because it hasn't gone to design review, but if this is attached to the development agreement, it doesn't matter what the minutes say, it's what the development agreement says and what the exhibits in the development agreement says. And if that's the, if this ends up being an exhibit to the development agreement, and essentially we're saying, yes, go ahead and design, we're not approving, but yes, go ahead and design because you have some sense that we're okay with the idea of what we're seeing right here. So. And that might've been what Commissioner Freeney was asking earlier yes. and at this stage this is the stage to look at the density what do you want right you're not in a quasi-judicial setting you're in a, a a what's best for the city setting but also you know I mean you have a work you have a partner that seems very willing to work with you on that as well but that's exactly the time to do that mayor and that's why we attach <laughs> concepts Yep. to the development agreement like the restaurant across the street which I'll never let go yeah <laughs> well that that embarrassed us all I mean because I we I'd like to know what we're supposed to do about it if they don't do it so yeah that's what I'd like well, to well know. anyway um can you tell us what you're gonna what what can you sorry Mo, can you tell us if you can get that from the, Yes, we can. The owner? Yeah, we can. And, and, and going back to um, some of the comments you made, Mayor, just a few minutes ago, when we met with Pinellas County traffic on this site, um, they had agreed that if we kept the driveway where we did, that it created no problem to the traffic on the causeway, right. nor did it cause any problem to the island configuration that are there today. So that's why we didn't, that's why we left and it I where it was. And I understand that. I so, I mean, it's, it would be. It's limiting. Yeah, it, it, so because of that, and because of that consideration with the county and with the traffic flow, it, uh, look, I would much rather have, much rather build just one building because it would be more cost effective from a construction standpoint, sure. but with the layout of the site and what we have to work with and the constraints of the causeway and where we can turn in and where we can exit, this is kind of what we're, what we're, we're pushed to this by design requirements, not because this is what we would like to do. Okay, so, um I'm going to open it up for questions of you, but I just want to, I almost feel like I see a solution here to make all of us happy. If, if, if we can get that owner to sign off, if we can just go right back to the table and not have to do X, Y, and Z and jump through 50,000 hoops, then, and if you can put together some concepts, which I know you all are really good at, you know, and I, I, have, no, I have no idea how long that takes, but I imagine two, three, four weeks, then we could then maybe come back and I mean, and maybe we, would we, that be, hang on, would that be a significant enough change that we would have to go back to LPA? Yeah. That'd be okay. Yeah, that'd but go, I mean, go back to LPA, but you do it now, you would be totally in the streamlined scenario that you brought up because what we were just talking about and banging our head against the wall with, with when I was answering Commissioner Gal's question is because really once you go into that amendment phase, you're not going to be able to continue to be working on a project over here under a development agreement that's sort of in limbo because it's being amended. Yeah. So we want to keep the project on the same time frame. That actually might be the, that, I don't, that, that would be the fastest well, way to no stream fee for amendment, right? Yes. Yes, there is. Or there yes, is. There yes, is. No. there is a fee for the amount. Same as the same fee for the initial authorization of the development agreement. Yeah. But now they wouldn't have an amendment. Now this would all streamline together. Well, right, but I have. Or no. No. no we, it, we would, there's additional staff work involved in that. There would be a fee. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Let me let these folks. I think you mm -hmm. see where we're going. Sure. Yeah, we're going. But I think we're all willing to try to figure this out. <clears throat> Commissioner Grant. You know, it makes a lot of sense to me to have a cohesive look at this because, you know, I was thinking you sort of, if you really think about it, you start off with this development agreement for this particular parcel. You are sort of rolling the dice, even if you get uh, 61, say, 
here, you know, for this particular, but to then bring in this a whole new thing, you're rolling the dice on how much, how much actual density. I mean, it's better to get the density all figured out at the first with a cohesive look, because it seems it really seems to me by parceling it out, you're rolling the dice on whatever is going to ever happen to that second parcel. You're correct. If if we didn't get the density, then we'd be forced into whatever that that parcel can hold on its own without requesting an, an adjustment for higher density. That's correct. Yep. So, okay. I, we understand that. So, <clears throat> I don't think I'm alone up here in this. It feels crammed, and and obviously I was hoping that by the extra land, it gives it some breathing space, which, and. You're not Obviously, concerned. what you've shown here is just more crammed. Um, now, I'm going to call Charlie on. He, he just did he leave? Out. Okay. Well, I, I think in LPA he said the sweet number was 70, not 75. So I just, I just, is there? I'm just worried it's crammed. You know, well, the design, help me with that. The that design works. is is just restricted because of the islands on the causeway and the turn-ins that the the. Pinellas County Traffic Authority told us they would not have an objection to. So that's because the whole design is driven by the entrance, that curb cut for the entrance. That, that drives the entire design. Um, could you build a building over the top of that? Yes, you possibly could, but you have to be, you wouldn't have any second floor because you have to have the height required for fire truck, for sanitation, and for the buses that come and pick up the players. So um, we, we tried to look at the the, the easiest way of taking care of the Blue Jays' needs with com staying with what Pinellas County traffic told us they needed with the densities that could be required. So I'm not saying that this is the perfect mousetrap in any stretch of the imagination. I'm telling you, though, in all honesty, we've, we've had to do and comply with many different com competing um, issues. Um I guess my other question is, um, I think you made comment at LPA that you have reached out to the neighbors. We have. There has been some, tell me about that. And we, we have met, um, uh, Charlie and I have met with the um, Dunedin Beach Civic Homeowners Association. Civic Association. We've met with them and their board. Uh, we have gone over and met, uh, my partner Rich Piercy and myself have gone over and met with the Harbor Point Condo Association board. And they had a good turnout. They had 30 people there, um, was which was really good. That is good. And um, that, both of those went well. In addition to that, we've now done two mailings, informational mailings that are required through the process. I think they both were around 300. Um, what we found is there's quite a bit of property on the causeway that, that is owned by out-of-town people that they rent those condos. So we didn't, when we had the public meeting at the library, I think we had about 35 or 40 people and uh, so we've had the public meeting at the library. We've met in person with the uh, Dunedin Beach Civic Association. We've met in person with the people that live in the Harbor Point. And uh, all, those, all those went, I, I was, I was uh, very, very pleased. Doug, what, would, what were some of the concerns they had? Well, the, um, the main concern was probably traffic on the causeway. And so when we went into the, when we did a deep dive with them on how this traffic would work with this facility for the Blue Jays, and by the way, the Blue Jays take about 60% of all available rooms on a year in, year out basis. A normal hotel's occupancy in the city of Dunedin is about 72 or 73%. So vast majority of the rooms and, and the reason we're doing this is for the Blue Jays, uh, that, that's undisputable. Um, the traffic was uh, the traffic issues came up from the people that are looking at the back end of the Hampton Inn. I, I, is that I, I can't remember the name of that. that oh, name. Scottish, uh, the Scottish Towers, Macedonia. I Mas it was Mac Harborview. Mac Mas behind Hampton Inn. Behind oh, the yeah, Hampton. Yeah. It's Mas the people yeah. that look at the back end of the Hampton is what right. I was saying. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Um, you know. Yeah, and we put it right up there because we Although, wanted a restaurant. That's a citywide concern. No, that's the what causeway we thought we the traffic, were. So. But, but those traffic that's concerns from that group were when we were planning on building this on the Hampton Inn site. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that, um, that 
alleviate, alleviated some of that. Um, the group that was most receptive of working with us was our direct neighbors to behind us at Harbor Point. They were uh, great to deal with. Their fence is falling down, so we stipulated we would put up a new fence for them along our property line. And um, then they wanted to know if they could uh, run power cords under the fence so they could tap onto our solar so they didn't have to spend any money on electricity. <laughs> and then they wanted to know Fair if our enough. pool was going to be bigger than their pool because they wanted the right to come over and swim in our pool. <laughs> But so it was, it's a very, very good relationship we have with them, and we think it's a they're good They're going to ask for a gate in that, that fence. <laughs> yeah, did they ask for a tiki bar? Or, you know? I'm not sure if they're yeah. going to want to hang out at a pool with a bunch of 20 somethings, but maybe. Who knows? You never know. You never yeah, know. I'm thinking maybe, you know, just saying. But um, so I think from, from I, I was mostly personally concerned with Harbor Point because they're our immediate neighbors to the sure. rear. And that's why we, that was one of the redesigns we did. We took all the balconies off the back of the building so there would be no one that could have be outside talking on the phone looking, looking across. It would be more of a traditional. Um, um, I just have a question. Don't read anything into it. But what is the, what's the allowable height out there? The zoning, you're going to get me off memory here. It's a FXM, so it's, uh, I want to say, I thought it was 36. Yeah, it's, it's in the middle. Okay, yeah, okay so they're going right to what it's allowed. Yeah, That's what I wanted to know. Feet. You know, no, anyway. Um, well, I mean, you know my biggest issue. It's kind of crammed, and Charlie, you had stepped out, but I, th I know, heard you say that 70 was the sweet spot, not 75. So um, I don't know. I'm just trying to, it just feels cramped. That's my only concern. So along with what you're saying, I think you've heard but that But I also times. understand the entranceway issue. I, I yeah. think you've heard that several times, yep. and maybe there are design techniques right. that help alleviate some of that. Maybe it is number of rooms and a little bit of the number of rooms. Um, obviously, I understand the business model of them not wanting to add other rooms on top of that. I mean, that's not efficient, meaning going to another site. They want to stay in the city. Yeah, yeah. Um, any other questions for um, Mr. Anderson? Uh, Commissioner, or Vice Mayor Gallo? No, ma'am. Commissioner Twenga? I'm fine, thanks. Okay. So, I think I've heard, at least from a few of our folks, is we'd like to see a combined site. Okay, as long as as long as y'all realize the constraints that we have on, on doing that with with the traffic and with the curb cuts that we've yes. been granted. But I mean you've heard our feedback. Yeah. We we would like to have a combined site too. I mean I only want to do this once. Yeah, exactly. Uh, which is in my whole I don't want to see you go through this process and then have to come back again. It just seems silly and we're not making the best decision because we're not seeing the big picture. Yes, I would if we can my whole my whole concern is the timing of getting this building out of the ground and available for the team in 2023. And I know that Jennifer understands that, and I think Jennifer has some things to add. And we still want to hear from Charlie, right? Or no? Yeah, yeah but Jennifer's been okay. waiting on me here for a little bit. And you'll hear from the public, too. Yes, I right. will be. Well, primarily, uh, and first of all, I want to thank George and Joy for working uh, with Doug to bring you this conceptual plan with, with all three buildings. And you know it is very important for all of you to see. And staff did encourage uh, Grand Street LLC to to stop for a minute and master plan this site as a predicate to this to this meeting. Um, but I, I want to be very realistic in what we're looking at as far as a time frame because Doug has been very clear all along that they needed uh, to occupy these buildings by April of 2023. This master plan process, we have to go back to DRC because we have a vacant parcel. We're going to need to look at the traffic. Is that true, Joey? Yes. Yeah, so I, th I think the first step would be that um, I think the, the very first step can happen pretty quickly. It sounds like is that that grant, uh, the property owner would have to authorize Doug to then request to negotiate and pull that parcel into these negotiations because that parcel is not in play at the moment. So that would be the first thing, and then has to be brought by Jennifer to you for authorization to put that property in play with our existing negotiation. Unless I'm misunderstanding something. I, I, and we can do that relatively quickly. But what I'm concerned about is that the vacant parcel, there's no assumption of any traffic being generated from the vacant parcel. There's no capture. There's no existing 
uh, building on that site. So we have to consider that brand new. It's going to impact the, you know, the traffic on the site. We need to go back to the Architectural Review Committee because there's another building. We're going to need to go back to the LPA and then come back to the City Commission. So, um, you know, within within Doug's parameters, within you know, you've been very clear about when you need the building. That's going to be very difficult to attain. As far as this, do you agree, staff? As far as the master plan of the site, this is at least a four four to five month process. But you were going to have to do that anyway. Yeah, that's what I. Don't I mean, that's either. the whole point. He's got to go to DRC. He's got to go to architectural review. He's got to go to LPA. He's got to come and to then us. Then comes an amendment. He has to and do, he has it, to so do it. But really the point is, though, what we're hearing from the applicant is that you want to move forward with this one in order to take occupancy. I'm saying that this is going to stop. We're not going to be able to to get to where Doug wants to go as far as the time frame goes because we're going to have to go back. That's why we came tonight with trying to get the first parcel approved so we could get the construction underway so we could deliver some rooms to the Blue Jays in April of 2023. So I'm just trying to, to be really clear about what it is we're looking at and what we're really talking about. The second part of this uh, discussion is that, you know, I hear from Charlie and I hear from Doug that the density that, that they want to see on the site and I hear from our commission that you want to see less density, less intensity on the site and the two of those are gonna clash. I'm worried about, you know, there's not a lot of wiggle room here to spread it out. So I'm worried about us bringing back a project that's going to meet your expectations. I, I truly am. You're, you're worried about, you know, the site layout, given that your existing uh, uh, access points that aren't going to change. So, you know, you want to see, a, a, you know, a, a less dense um, master planned property and I'm just not sure, given what I see with the setbacks and what we want with the unit count, that, that what we bring back is going to meet that goal for you. We're more than willing to try. We're more than willing to work with Doug um, and his partners, certainly the Blue Jays, to bring you what, what you'd like. But I'm concerned um, about the end product. Well, and I think part of the struggle we're having is that you've got three big buildings, right? And big, huge flat walls in <clears throat> some areas. So it makes it look like a tall, big, fat building mm -hmm. versus, I'm, again, this is not my forte, but I think there are architectural things that can be done to not make it look like one big, tall, big square thing. So the mayor, from staff's perspective, I mean, if that's the direction, the expectation of the city commission, that's certainly something that we can work with Doug on. But as far as when you're looking at the building footprint, I, I don't see it decreasing a lot if you want the number of units you want, realistically. But is there give on number of units? Because I heard there was at LPA. I'm um, not saying there's a huge amount of give, but. If there, if Charlie said 70, that's a five room difference. And is there other ways that you can shrink it a little bit or make it, or I'll help let the architecture kind of help it? Well, to the, make it, you know. Some of the other constraints are by code, we have to be right up against Causeway Boulevard. And can I just jump in there? I have that on my note. It looks like it's right up on the sidewalk, which mm -hmm. I don't like at all because you've got, that's a trail spur. Right. It should not be right up on the sidewalk. Yeah, that's that's where it, we were told it had to be by code. And so that's what we were complying with with what's the current code. That's the great thing about the development agreement. Development agreement allows you to do other things. Commissioner Tornga. Yes, um, uh, I would like to make a comment because I've just been kind of sitting back and listening to some of this, and that's great. Um, I did speak with the city manager uh, about these issues before we got here, um, and she was great about telling me about what was happening, because of, of course my first comment was, why don't we put, why aren't we doing a 75? Um, and I understand that's the number that that we've heard before. And she explained to me that you really needed to get this done, and she used the date of April. Of, of April of, of, uh, of 23 in order to do that for the Blue Jays. So we've got, we've got an interesting situation going on here in my mind because we're listening to you who wants to build something here but also for a, a, another partner of ours here, the, the Blue Jays, who need to have that space. Right. So I just, I said, F okay, fine, I, got, I get it, I get it. We gotta let that go, that part of it go. And now we seem to be kind of cramming that down, and I'm, I'm a little nervous. I'm not nervous about our staff's ability to do work. I'm just worried about our staff's ability to give you what you think you needed to have. If you need to have that in April, and we put that extra, you know, you're sitting there with all of us talking to you, 
Um, if, if that's not going to meet your requirements, we all get it like this, I think. And that was my, so I ended it with, uh, with Jennifer, and she was, she led a lot of information to me about that. If that, if you think you can build another building in there and get that done in that time frame, um, I'm, I, I can, just to my mind, that's tight. Uh, it is. It's very, a, very it's, tight. It's an aggressive schedule. It's uh, one that we have, and we have, um, to um, Joey's credit, we have uh, come to uh, be able to do some things like using third-party plans review with the blessing of the city, which speeds up that process. We have the ability to use third-party inspectors that can do inspections on Saturdays, which help that out as well. In anticipation of this, we've already asked for the traffic study update to show the count with the 0.4 acres. We already anticipated that. We've already got that under mm -hmm. underway. When, when's it due? When do you expect to have it? Uh, probably in the next 10 days. Uh, I'm sorry, how, what? I asked him when he expected to have the traffic study on oh, the gotcha. new parcel, right? We, we anticipated that we were going to have to do that for that 0.4 acres because there's no building on it today. Yeah. So right. whatever we generate uh, with the additional rooms will be additional traffic count. So we wanted to be sure that we had that to submit to staff so they saw that we had covered that base. But on that note, I mean, it's going to be something. Somebody's got property mm -hmm. rights yes. to put something there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's not like it's never going to be anything. That's so right. if it's a lower level of an increase, that's better than, you know, somebody's going to have a property right to build there. And I don't think the car wash should stay the car wash for it forever either. No. Mm -hmm. so. no. But it still sounds to me, I'm hearing your concern, but mm -hmm. I, I can't wrap my mind around how this wouldn't just be quicker in the end if everybody's in their well-oiled machine and not just quicker to get you started but quicker for your construction in the end I mean just more organized and reasonable people aren't looking at DRC things twice and going to architectural review twice and I mean it just seems like master planning it is would be quicker in the end. I mean, what am I missing? Am I missing something? Well, I think that, that, that you know, my, my understanding from Doug, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is that, that, that Grand Street Partners LLC wants this parcel to move forward through the process, and then the, the other parcel would follow mm -hmm. in order to get this one done. And so what you're talking about Meaning is stopping that Meaning the shovel would be in stuff. the ground before they started the amendment exactly. process. Yep. The exactly, exactly. Um, that's the mission critical. And, and that was what was conveyed to us repeatedly. So in essence, what you're doing now is, is stopping these two buildings, adding that and master planning it. Um, you know, you can see some areas where you might be able to, to uh, make, you know, the, two build, the three buildings interact a, a, a lot better on the site, but you're stopping the entire thing while everything catches up and then moves through the process together. So then that brings us back to this idea. What I'm worried about is that, let's say you build for this season, the, the 23 season, you build these two buildings, and then right after you go build the other one, again, now you're putting the neighborhood through a much longer construction process, I think. That part is, that Pro, part prob, is true, and you'd actually- and, and that concerns me because, you know, it's fatigue for, for the neighbors. We, the we, would, we, would like, we would like nothing, let me be clear, we would like nothing better than to do all this at one time, but with the constraints that we had, and what we were trying to get rooms available for the team in the 2023 season, that's why the decision was made to try and move forward with the 51 room hotel with immediately thereafter going through this whole long process again for the addition to the hotel. Um, from, a, from a management standpoint and from a, a monetary standpoint, it's much more inexpensive for me to do it all at one time than it is to go back and, and do two complete processes it's just that the timing of when I have to deliver rooms to the team for the 2023 season, that's what dictated why we did what we did. Do you still think you can meet that? Um, if, if we cut some of these things down and if you get that owner to sign off and... If we, yes, it is a distinct possibility we could. It would take a Herculean effort by staff and it would take a, a, a strong effort on making sure we scheduled the phases as close together as we possibly could. But uh, the city attorney, um, and <coughs> we, we, could, we could do that uh, amendment to that 
um, in, in short order, I think. We've already got the, the basis for it. Jennifer? What I'd like to do is, is um, continue this, you know, to the next meeting. Your second reading is, is on the 21st. I need to talk to staff about, I need to look at these timelines specifically. Uh, and the effort then is certainly on you, but on staff, and staff is already overburdened. And so I really want to look at the time frames and what they look like. You know, I understand how important this is to the Blue Jays and, and uh, to the I city as a whole. I think we all do. I, I yeah. don't think any of us are trying to continue to throw, you know, <clears throat> sticks into the spoke, if you will. Right. It's not what we're trying to do, but we're just mm -hmm. trying to make sure we're doing our jobs as well. We all want the same thing. We I, want a great-looking building right. that meets the needs of the Blue Jays for the next 25 years. So I'd like to, if you will, Mayor, continue first reading so I can uh, talk to George and Joey and Doug about some, some time frames and what we're looking at here and then come back to you on the 21st. Because it requires two, two readings. If we approve it tonight, doesn't mean we have to approve it the next night or the next time or, or whatever. That's true. No, that's true. You, this is your first reading, so you can, you can also approve it on first reading and then go to second reading. Um, what are you suggesting that we do? I don't know. The city manager asked for a continuance. I don't know if that was, but either one it does the same thing, I guess. Well, it seems like if there's any inclination to approve this as a standalone project, then, you and you still have the public to hear from and others, so no, I don't want to tell you how you should or shouldn't vote. You're not really done with your process yet, but the, but if you, if you can envision it as a standalone project, then it seems like moving forward saves a hearing. If you're, if if you if you don't and you can't then it seems like um that doesn't really do m much by uh well by continuing it you just you leave the two readings out there so well, you keep all options on the table is what you really do uh, right well all options remain on the table even if it's approved on first reading. well but they'd clearly be delayed if we right it would be delaying by one but I had just what I still can't quite figure is that even if you approve these first two, how you absolutely understand you would get this many rooms over here. I, I just can't bridge that gap. Yeah, because it good. seems to me he doesn't know that. Doesn't that's the problem. That. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, you're rolling the dice that. if we do it here that you'll get whatever he density over in that other place and we can't even say that that will happen i mean we, right. we we're that's the negotiation unless it's a cohesive how can you know you don't know well you're you're exactly right you're exactly right okay um Good. any other questions I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. I just want to give Charlie a chance. Yeah, I wanted to do that too, and I just wanted to see if there was any other questions for Mr. Anderson. So I wanted to have Charlie be able to speak, and then I want to open up to the public, and then we'll deliberate. Yeah, I'm anxious. How we for, move forward. I'm anxious for public input yeah. too. So. Any other questions for Mr. Anderson? A, a real quick one, uh, if I may. Sure. The. Um, I was I'm just thinking the whole time about turning dirt when you turn dirt when you turn dirt how long from the time you turn dirt to the, t the time you're completed and of course that's really unknown because of what's going on in the future as well not only with building material but with with capacity but if you know if we do if you if we delay this a little bit now we're we're already getting into November and then we're into December and then we're January. So now we're January. You need to have it done in, in, in 15 months. I think somebody could do that in 15 months. So the real question is, how long, if you had the whole, if you had the whole thing available to, to start on, from the time you turned dirt, what would you guess would be the time that you would complete it? It would take an absolute Herculean effort to get it done in 13 months. More likely a month or two longer than that, weather depending. You know, our biggest challenge is getting it in the dry. Once we get it in the dry, we can we can do a lot inside. But it's it's that critical phase of getting it in the dry. Thank you. Okay. Charlie, did you want to come up and speak? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Thank you very much. Thank you all for your consideration. Mm -hmm.
Good evening. Um, Charlie Wilson, uh, current address, Holiday Inn Express, 975 Broadway. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> hopefully we'll have a new address at 491 Causeway. Uh, but um, Mayor, thanks for having me and city commissioners and city manager, thank you. Um, I don't want to speak very long. You guys have heard, heard me talk before. I've made it clear how important a, um, a brand new facility, a new dormitory hotel is to the Blue Jays, something with up-to-date features, um, a safe area, clean, comfortable housing. We all know how important that is for the uh, athletic model for rest and recovery and, and of course, performance. Um, I've said before how important it is for the Blue Jay players to be a part of the, the, uh, the community in Dunedin. We want to contribute to the economy, but we really want to contribute to the, uh, the community as well. And I thought it was a great presentation that I heard at the beginning of the meeting about um, the volunteer, and I don't want to lose that. This is important to the Blue Jays. It's important to our players. It's important to their development. We need to be involved in the communities. We are in some of our other affiliates. We are with, with the Dunedin team. But once we get this, this hotel built and we get 140 players staying here, then we'll have the ability to get, to get more involved. We can, we can do the book at, at the ballpark um, activities. Our players can participate in youth clinics and camps and help the young kids in, in schools and camps develop their baseball skills. We can get involved in the reading programs at the elementary schools, whether it's San Jose or whatever, but our, our players are gonna volunteer and community outreach is really important. And I, and I wanna mention that, so not just for this group, but for the other people listening. Um, and this is your minor league, right? Yep, mm -hmm. this it is. Cause there's some out there that, that think this is your mm -hmm. high-end players with their cars. They can't understand why there's gonna, I'm like, no, these are kids. Right, this is, this Young is adults. Our, yeah, player development or minor league, but um, I think people should know this is where this is this is where Vlad Guerrero and Bo Bichette were staying three years ago. Well, so right now our, our players are staying. I want to know how many know who that is. So you know, I, I, I do. I okay, good. <laughs> I knew that name. Okay, <laughs> only because I follow the social media. <laughs> All right, okay, got it. Charlie. Yep. Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, thanks for the opportunity to be here. We're still really excited. We're hoping that this is gonna continue with uh, positive momentum. Obviously the timeline is really important to us. We were hoping to be, before COVID, we were hoping to be in the hotel yeah. now. Right. Um, we we're really hoping, you know, with the, the latest set of developments that we'd be in in January, 2023. I don't, I don't wanna speculate and I don't wanna confuse anything, but we're still really excited. We're, we're hoping this, this continues to move, and if there's any questions that I could answer or, or help out for anybody here or the public, I'd be, be happy to answer. Any questions for Charlie? Well, I think you're going to be a World Series team next year. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, I'll, I'll just put, that's not a question. I'm we just saying. We will be planning yeah. a parade for you. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. So you all have to fly down here from Toronto. No, you know what? I, I, I don't have any questions, but I did want to say while you're up here that one of the things that's very strong is that I know with if you guys were there, if this does work, I mean, it will always be kept up. It will always look good. It will, it'll, it'll be a classy thing. Yeah. And, uh, and because you're great partners and that's how it's been. And we know that. And that's a, you know, obviously I don't even know if we'd be sitting here debating this if it wasn't for that. It's a strong partner that we know what we're going to get. So. Thank you. You know, obviously we feel the same way. That's why we want to be in Dunedin. We mm -hmm. want to, we want to spend our money here and we want to, we want to contribute any way we can. So. Thank you, Charlie. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, all right, I'm going to open it up to the public. Anyone wishing to come forward and speak to the development agreement with um, City of Dunedin and Coastal ICF Construction and Grant Street Partners? Okay, now it's coming back to the commission. Um, Jennifer, what do you what do you prefer that you that you what do you want to see us do? I'd prefer to continue first reading. Continue. Yeah, I. I so I like talk to staff. Yeah, uh, and as I said, uh, I, you know, we need to set a, set a realistic uh, timeline. Uh, you know, as far as the boards and committees and and you know when they would meet and 
how they would be in that type of a thing and really understand uh, the path moving forward if it were the combined site. I would like to work with, um, with Doug uh, Anderson a little bit more to talk about you know, this issue with the massing on site. I wanna make sure that we're going to address your issues. I don't wanna bring you something in three months that we're struggling over again. I agree. So. I agree with that. Okay. okay. That's what I'm sure everybody understand. Up. Yeah, I'm fine with that. But <clears throat> by doing a continuance, does that mean basically next time is the first reading? Uh -huh. And then the following would still be a second reading if we choose to go forward. That's right. So it just backs it up two weeks, everything. Correct? Yes. Okay. Aaron, would, if we can, uh, like to include your comments or concerns about the sidewalk, and if that can be addressed in the agreement somehow, because that is tight and it is. And that is a that's a trail spur, and there's a lot of open area. If you look at that side of the road, you know, and there's opportunity with the new bridge to widen sidewalks when they build the new bridge on the causeway, there will be opportunity to do that. We haven't even talked about that part of it yet, but if there's space, and it might be wide in some areas and narrow in others, but I, I don't want us to hurt that opportunity with a five, five foot sidewalk when it should at least be six or eight feet just because it's a, a trail spur, you know. Of course, Doug's only doing what we told him to do, right, Doug? Yeah. Well, it is, which is, again, you know, I but think that's you, one of those pieces of the code we forgot to change. But if you push it back, you know, then you're going to have I to get push it. it back to the high point. Yeah. I mean, whatever, every, everything you do has it. a consequence. I get it. Uh, that's why I'm, that's why we're saying all of this, and Jennifer's head will be spinning, and George and Joey and Doug, and they'll all go out and say, okay. I think we should give her a bonus. Uh, we <laughs> Sorry. We have the crosswalk. Would you like to vote on that, Mo? No, let's vote on it now. And we have the crosswalk in there that that's what we want, but if the state does not give them permission, are they in default in the agreement? No. No. Actually, the, the, um, so my understanding from the crosswalk is that, um, you know, as far as the location goes, we have to work on that. Um, it didn't meet the warrants for a grant. And but yeah, they came to look themselves. It's, it right. We just weren't getting oh. grant funding for okay. it. Yeah, and I, I, I think I don't think I, I circle back with you on that aspect. So, yeah, but it can be built. Okay. So let's get a motion to postpone. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, Commissioner Kynes yeah. and Vice Mayor Gao. Any no, final any final comments? Well. Right. I do. A bit. Go ahead. Okay. Anyone service? No, no. I no, I mean, I, you know, obviously, you know, this is, this is tough because we're trying to do what's, what makes sense for the causeway. And um, we have a, just a long-standing, amazing partner that we also appreciate and want to work through it. So, um, you know, as with everything, sometimes it gets a little dicey up here and probably frustrating down there, but hopefully we'll get to, a, a, you know, a solution that works for, for the community. And we'll, and I'll, um, of course, work with Jennifer on supporting those efforts um, and all the efforts. I do want to thank Doug and his team um, for, for all their work up to this point. But that way we can make sure, too, some of the expectations that they have about their parallel track, um, you know, we'll, we'll make sure that we vet those, those expectations as well. Because I also wouldn't want to get down the road and they've got shovels in the ground and then an amendment's actually holding up. <laughs> Right, that, right, that, right. that they don't want. So we'll and make sure that we vet those. That's what I'm worried about as well. We'll make sure that we work with the city manager and, and, and the group to, to make sure that those items are vetted as well to, to, to be helpful. Thank you very much for... Right. Quick question on this. This is a sure. postponement, yes. correct? Yes. So continue. this postponement... It's a postponement. What, what, what exactly does the postponement do? First then? reading. First. It will... It will postpone it, our first reading oh. until the next right. meeting. Just until the 21st. And right. And we, we pick up where we are if that's where we are or... Right, yeah. Are. Continuing... It has to be exactly the same, essentially, I think, right? Because it's that's what's been advertised. first reading. It's yeah. Continue continues the first reading. Yeah, okay. right. Thank you. Yeah, nothing new. And then we'll determine what, what right. we're going to do. I think do. you used the word postponed, and it needs to be continued. Continued. Okay, continue. you know, actually, I've ne we've I, never used that I word continue. Said, so, what's the difference between continue said, and postpone? The language that's you, if you've ad did we run an ad for this one? Yes, 
the language that's used in the statute or in the case law is called continued to a date certain, so you don't have to re-advertise. Okay, but that's so, the same thing. Okay, well, it's the same postpone. thing. We've used postpone yeah. for decades. Right. I don't Just want. I don't want to change my language because I don't. Think you it's don't have to. Different. Postpone okay, so to a date certain, thing. but I was letting co the commissioner know that it's just a continuation of the same gotcha. of the same discussion. You've not actually taken action on first reading. Okay. Okay. So, so our motion is to postpone it until the twenty. Well, I mean, it's it's a continuation to a, a date certain that will be the twenty first, and that will be the first reading, and then we would also have a second reading. Is that correct, mm -hmm. Nikki? And that's so. That's my motion. Okay. <laughs> and we have that second. Um, and. Any other final comments? No? no okay. Uh, let's do a roll call vote, please. Commissioner Collier? Aye. Commissioner Hennie? Aye. 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 Aye, and that motion passes unanimously. I know where you're going. Ah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a little five minute break. Yeah, please. I know the game started, but we're here for a while. It's quite yet. Oh, yeah, I mean, I'm we're not. here. I've got to change my shirt now, though.
Housing Chapter 58, Pensions and Retirement, Article 2, Retirement Division 2, Firefighters Retirement System of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Dunedin, Amending Section 5856, Benefit Amounts and Eligibility, Amending Section 5857, Pre-Retirement Death, Amending Section 5860, Optional Forms of Benefits, Amending Section 5866, Minimum Distribution of Benefits, Amending Section 5880, share plan benefit providing for severability of provisions repealing all ordinances in conflict herewith and providing an effective date this has been reading of ordinance 2135 on first reading by title only can i have a motion to approve so moved. I'll second. commissioner second. franey and commissioner kynes teresa brief but brilliant Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> that's good thank you <laughs> Same with you over there, Francis. I know Mo's got to have a question over there. I wondered what the actual area Told you. <laughs> Told you. <laughs> yeah, I, I really don't. I mean, it's not costing us anything. There are changes that need to be made in the technical. Area. Any questions from anybody else? No. Okay. Uh, anybody from the public wish to speak to this item? I don't think anybody from the pub is here. Is there? I can't stop. I can't see over here because Nikki's in the way. Is there anybody over there? Oh, it's a nice check, okay. but no, there's no All right, we'll come back there. to the commission. Any final comments? <laughs> yeah. You know what? I, I, I wrote down everything you what? You never mind. Okay. I studied this. I studied it. Mo would have been happy. <laughs> I count on Mo to ask those questions, yeah, so I don't have to. This one, I over. I did myself. There you go. Okay, any final comments from anybody? All right, roll call vote, please. Aye. <laughs> Aye. Sorry. Aye. Commissioner Kynes. Aye. Commissioner Franey. Aye. Mayor Aye, and that motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you. All right, now we have the second reading of Ordinance 20 01 Comprehensive Plan Update. All right, everybody have something to. <laughs> to drink or do while I read this ordinance title. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, okay. So All right, I'll just start, Mayor. Ordinance number 20-01, an ordinance of the City of Dunedin amending the future land use element of the comprehensive plan of the City of Dunedin to provide goals, objectives, and policies for smart growth based principles, establishing future land use designations that are consistent with the countywide map and rules as well as the community's vision, providing a resilient and sustainable slash environmental friendly community, revitalization of major corridors and areas through redevelopment and infill, amending the transportation element to provide goals, objectives, and policies for safe and efficient transportation system by implementing the principles of the complete streets policy, promoting alternative transportation strategies, through local regulations and land uses, supporting and coordinating with state and county agencies to plan and implement a safe multimodal transportation system and developing and implementing a multimodal transportation plan in support of regional, local, and area activities. Amending the housing element to provide goals, objectives, and policies for ensuring the availability of quality, safe, sanitary, and affordable housing to meet the needs of all citizens of Dunedin maintaining and updating the affordable housing needs assessment to ensure adequate programming for affordable housing, addressing improvements to the existing housing conditions and encourage affordable housing opportunities through federal, state and local regulations and continuing partnerships with countywide and local programs for affordable housing from intergovernmental and nonprofit agency for housing needs creating a conservation element to provide goals, objectives, and policies for implementing water replenishment, recycling, and hazard waste reduction programs, 
preserving and or improving the quali water quality of drainage basins and the aquifer systems, preserving environmentally sensitive areas, promoting air quality and reducing greenhouse gas emissions and carbon footprint, creating a coastal management element to provide goals, objectives and policies for protecting human life, public and private property and coastal resources from the effects of hurricanes and other natural disasters in the coastal storm area, managing and regulating development and public facilities to reduce flood risk related to sea level rise, ensuring safety of all citizens from the dangers of natural disaster events, and ensuring to minimize public and private vulnerability to future disasters, amending the recreation and open space element to provide goals and objectives and policies for maintaining the minimum levels of service for recreation and open space, establishing a public position for the preservation of open space, supporting innovative recreation and activity programs and supporting and expanding parks and recreation facilities, amending the capital improvements element to provide goals, objectives and policies for providing public facilities, protect investment in investments in existing facilities and maximize the use of existing facilities, deleting the public schools and intergovernmental coordination elements of the comprehensive plan, providing for severability, providing for repeal of ordinances in conflict herewith, and providing for an effective date hereof. And this has been reading of ordinance 20-1-01 on second reading by title only. Wow. <laughs> Francis, I think we're done. <laughs> concludes my presentation. <laughs> so Can I second? second? Okay, Commissioner Franey and Vice Mayor Gao, thank Perfect. you. Good to go. Yep. Uh, good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of the Commission. Uh, George Kinney on behalf of the Community Development Department, and I'm not going to, I had a little bit of a prepared intro for this just to talk about the, the value of a comprehensive plan. Yeah, and, we know that. And you guys all know that. So I'm, I'm going to absolutely skip that. And based on and the, most people that might be watching also know that yeah. because if they're watching while there's a raise game on, they know it. Yep. Understood. So I'm just going to kind of I'm just going to turn this very quickly over to Francis. I just want to just want to kind of tee it up for her. And what she's going to be talking to you about is a lot of the revisions that came as a result of the Department of Economic Opportunity uh, recommendations that came through after first reading. Um, but what I did want to point out was, you know, their recommendations are intended to strengthen the policies that you heard at first reading. Um, and there is nothing of substance that was removed or deleted in any way. So you're, it's really just modifications and corrections based but, on that. But real quick, it's not just the D, DEO or whoever. The, there it's, are other. It's the, it's the changes that we made sitting up here or suggestions we made sitting up here at first reading, wasn't it? Uh, or was I that done at a workshop prior to Yeah, this? I wasn't That was sure. at the workshop. Yeah, I was going to say that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But that's my comments. I'm going to turn it over to Francis. If you have questions at the end, we'll be happy to answer. All right. Good evening, commissioners and um, city manager, mayor, uh, vice mayor, um, Francis Leong, Sharp Planner 2 for the city of Dunedin. Um, and once again, we're presenting the second and final reading of ordinance number 20-01 comprehensive plan update. So I'll try to make this very brief and hopefully brilliant for everybody. <laughs> um, so come again, um, just to refresh everybody's mind, um, it, the slide itself is self-explanatory. Uh, what a comprehensive plan in itself is literally a blueprint guide to the development of our city and how um, the city is going to establish policies to um, to reach the long-range goals, objectives, and policies, how we want to grow our city um, in the next 20 to 25 years. So as a brief history of the comprehensive plan, the first plan was done back in 1989, and the last update that was done is back in 2008. So hence um, the need for this update, and so as a result of that, um, there are some um, subsequent changes um, that the DCA is now known as the DEO, the Development Economic of Opportunity, who um, oversees the land management, um, growth management uh, for the state in itself. So what's new in the comprehensive plan once again is that we uh, freshened the look of the plan in itself to be a little bit more uh, reader friendly and colorful, a little bit more visual so that people have some visual aids to understand 
what the vision that we would want to achieve um, down the line. And then as a result of that, um, we also incorporated other existing plans, uh, such as the 2017 visioning update uh, that was done at that, that year, as well as take into consideration of the municipal business plan that we have established today. And then within the elements, um, the changes with the new um, plan is that we embedded the intergovernmental coordination requirement throughout each of the elements that you see in the comprehensive plan. And we separated the coastal management and conservation element that was put together um, in the 2008 document. We separated that, that out to emphasize the importance of addressing the Apparel of Flood Act um, that was adopted in 2015. Um, we also eliminated the public schools element um, in terms that the interlocal agreement that we have with Pinellas County um, and Pinellas County Schools and 12 other municipalities that's already been uh, addressed in that um, effect. And also we updated the concurrency that we have set in place forth um, in our document. So this slide pretty much shows the um, the long journey of the development of the comprehensive plan that we have here today. So it started back in January 2019 through um, you know, the year 2020 and now today uh, through several uh, workshops that were done um, by presenting each of the element um, to the city commission at each of the work session or city commission meetings to get feedback. And we also got, gathered uh, feedback from our advisory committees as well as staff for that. And so from there, since the first reading, we transmitted the first uh, draft to the state and also other review agencies to provide comments or um, filing for any, you know, if there's any objections to any parts of our plan in itself. And as a result of that, and that's just showing that we're right there, um, we do have some comments that were received from um, DEO uh, with regards to these elements that are shown here. Um, again, as George uh, had mentioned in the intro introduction, um, a lot of them are just uh, suggested recommendations to strengthen our um, uh, goals, objectives, and policies within each of these elements, and also addressing um, you know, key things that were uh, left in the adopted plan. We just moved it right into the exist, you know, to the new plan to ensure um, compliance with the state. And that concludes my presentation. And um, I do have a lot of supplemental um, documents with the staffing, and you probably have seen it. But a lot of them are shown as the attachments uh, that shows the, um, the responses that we gathered from other agencies, including DEO, and then our responses back to them to address the changes. OK. Questions? Any questions, John? I have nothing. Deborah? Um, question. I, I know. I'm, I'm thinking that over. Is okay. it a question? Is it a comment? Is it a question? Is it a comment? I'm not going to do either one. Okay. Questions? Uh, Commissioner? Uh, yes, ma'am. Just a quick question. The, the comments from the DEO, mm -hmm. just to strengthen it, do you automatically incorporate those, or what's the process for that? So with the comments that were brought up from the DEO, what staff has done, we went back into our draft and make those adjustments accordingly. So whatever um, you see here tonight and moving forward will be the final document with the changes incorporated as a result in response to the comments that were given to us. And if I could just add, I mean, we, we didn't just automatically incorporate some concepts and thoughts. We, I mean, we, we discussed them. If they were specific to just something that we had control over, we discussed them, decided maybe there was another way to word it that DEO would still be accept, you know, would still be ex acceptable to the change. But if it, if that policy or goal affected another organization or Pinellas County, for example, we, we did do some work with them to make sure that we were aligning what we needed to align with their, with their land use plans as well. Okay. I thought, I thought on that note, I thought it was kind of interesting that their comment regarding there was no, they said something like there was no significant effect on state roads, but you do allow more density or something, something, and 
I'm thinking, have you seen how much density we've lowered mm -hmm. and you're worried about your roads? Yeah, really? We were <laughs> careful not to. I, I mean, I, you know, anyway, I thought that was funny. Uh, Commissioner? No, I, I have nothing. Okay. Um, I had a question for Nikki. Um, this last uh, legislative session, there was, and I, I don't know the wording of it all, but there was something passed about private property, private property rights. Mm -hmm. so, which, you know, I want to, like, never mind. I'm not going to say what. But go ahead. I, I, I was just going to say, if I could preempt you, Nikki, that we, you. I want to spit. That's so what I wanted to say. That came into play in, I think, July, effective July 1, basically. The, we have talked with the state about when we need to incorporate that. We didn't want to muddy the waters with this update because yeah, really. we were pretty far along. Um, so they have told us that that can come with our next, our next update. So That's exactly at, what I was going to say, Mayor. It's, it would be the next one after the legislation. So we okay. don't, haven't done it now, but we'll do it. And that can be done like every five years or something like mm -hmm. that. So Okay, mm -hmm. good. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> uh, and then when we, and then when we send this back to DEO or whatever, they might, they just have to approve it. They they won't make additional comments or anything. We are this. this. We anticipate that we wouldn't receive any further comments as a result because we have worked with the DEO staff uh, with our responses back to their comments. So a lot of the things that you see within the supplemental <coughs> documents, we've we've literally Talk brought you know reached out yeah, to yeah. DEO to make sure that we're we're very cool. good. And <laughs> they, you're in communication versus right versus just you know paper back and forth. Yes. And, and, and that's a great segue. I just want to very quickly. I know we're 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 trying to move this along, but I I just need to shout out to Joey and Francis. I mean, this was a talk about a Herculean effort. Yeah, yeah. thank you uh, all so with the group that you know, didn't have a lot of folks there at, the, at that point. So the work that they did to get it to this point, I think is absolutely yes, magnificent. Thank you. I, just to read the happy. title alone. <laughs> Mayor, I did just want to, uh, to your last question, we'll know within five business days of sending them the final oh, very of good. any defense. So it's not like they can, oh, they can come back 30 days later. If it, right. It's five business days. So if there wow. is... I know they've, that the team has worked really hard to, to where it's just a, a rubber stamp at this point, hopefully from DEO, but they do have to make, it's a, it's a very tight time frame that they have to notify you of something that's, that if they find it deficient. Well, one of the things I was thinking, and I, I, I guess it's a question because I don't know what is planned and I'm certainly not trying to dump more work, but the last two hours isn't gonna fill up, um, but I think it would at least at a minimum be helpful if our boards and committees received a copy. Yeah, absolutely. Once confirmed and it would be even be more helpful if whatever their particular subject, if there are any, if they reviewed it, not for their comments, but just so that they understand it. We, we anticipated that. So okay. We'll, we'll but, but anyway, I'd love them to get a copy that they understand because a lot of people don't even know that such a thing exists <laughs> and it really is our guiding document. Yes, ma'am. I do have an actual uh, question. What if there's a whole new innovative thought and yet you update these every five years and you have this whole new innovative thought that would definitely fit into a, a lot of things we talk up here and if you put it into a resolution form, where would that go, Nikki? You can amend your comprehensive plan more frequently at any time. Than any so time we could bring time. something really innovative. Well, and the great thing about a comprehensive plan is it's purposely set up to be Big. to provide you General. with the flexibility to implement the Sorry. mechanisms you think appropriate to advance <laughs> those policies. So that's the Always genius of it, in that it's Always not going to it's not going to pin you into anything that that you that, to that is wonderful i've already talked to jennifer she's trying to talk me out of it you know no this is I'm too mm. but and, and chances are the policy it. exists that we can you that's we can not drive true. new regulation problem. that's not true <laughs> 
there are certain things that are required to be updated every five years, and that's what George was referring to. And so what the state has said with that new requirement was even if, if you don't make any updates, you at least have to do it by that next time that that would be due for you. Right. That's what they that's okay. what they're trying. <clears throat> but thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Any anybody from the public wish to speak to this item? Joey? No, I'm just kidding. What is that? <laughs> I do have a comment card. The gentleman was not able to stay. Oh. Uh, Mr. George Lagos from 1473 Sturbridge Court. Uh -huh. um, he is in support of this item, but he wasn't able to stay. He was okay. here earlier. Oh. All right, thank you. Anybody else? Oh. No. Yeah, watch okay. the game. Any final comments? <laughs> yeah, it's two nothing. Obviously, we're thanking you. You got our applause. We love you guys. Thank you so much for all the hard work. <laughs> One more thing off the plate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just to give you Big a little thing. update, uh, Rays 2, uh, Red Sox 0. Okay. Yay. <laughs> Go Rays. Okay. Uh, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Kynes? Aye. Commissioner Tornga? Aye. Vice Mayor Gow? Aye. 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 Aye, and that motion passes unanimously. Yay! Congratulations, you guys. Good job. Congratulations. Okay. Now we have the uh, start item, American yeah. Rescue Plan funding for special events. I need a motion to add this to the agenda. So moved. Thank you. Commissioner Kynes and Vice Mayor Gao, thank you. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Um, we have heard the presentation on Tuesday. How about if we just say are there any questions further that you've thought of since then? Our first slide will just show you again the requirements for receiving the funds. If you want to just look that over, I can go through them. And there was one addition financially, two additions financially, based on some certain special circumstances. Um, as you heard, uh, Tina. Tina from Casatina's right. talk about Pioneer Park being under construction, so we would make allowances for um, being able to move that money back uh, day of the day. a year to the day of the dead um, to 23, October of 23. And also what we didn't have in was the October Fest for the brewery. Uh, they, this year, right now, it, it starts this week. Now, yeah. yeah. Um, we put in... It, Back in 19 or 18, the last time they did it, closing the street, and they may do that next year, was $4,500. Okay. So between Casatina's 7000 and um, the brewery's 4500 it's 11500 more than it was when you looked at this uh, spreadsheet on Tuesday. Okay, any questions for anybody? Well, I see you didn't give any regard to my concern about American craft endeavors. I mean, they're getting eight days worth of city and sheriff's coverage which seems <clears throat> excessive compared to everybody else i get the principle um but you feel that that's the right thing to do vince or? i do okay anybody else yeah i would like for you to add right. some just, just add some work. general information to that would you please because that was a, a big concern and uh and i'd like to just hear a little bit more if you could well i think you know first of all according to our consultant he did talk about cherry picking the the different uh, events and I think that this is really a economic engine that's bringing in lots of people and lots of money into our city so I felt strongly that it, we should um, allow the the, the 10,000 for each weekend is what it comes down to I mean they're getting more than anybody else I get that they do more but you could easily say, I mean, nobody else is getting more than a two-day event coverage, so, you know, it would make sense to give them two days' worth. But um, are we going to be able to barter with them based on some of the comments that got made? Yes, I did have some conversation with uh, Bob Ironsmith, who works a little closer with the uh, organization than I do, and he, he said there's no problem with uh, allowing certain spaces so that the businesses could get a little bit more visibility. I mean, I personally think it's too much. Did we actually ask the question to the consultant that if, ever, if the most anybody else is getting is two days event worth of coverage? I, I did not have that conversation. That I seems don't know like it was. would get you over, but I, I'm not going to make a big deal about it unless somebody else feels the same. 
I, I'm concerned. I'm concerned for that reason, and I'm also concerned because as we look through each one of these things, we just want to make sure that we're being very, very fiscal responsible. And so, you know, not trying to be mean, not trying to be, just asking the question of of is 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 that the right thing for us to do in this particular case for them? And if it is, well, then it is. And if it's if it's questionable or up for question, um, I, I've certainly. Uh, I, have, I don't have any questions on any of the others, so it was just on that. So, are there any other? Well, I, I just think the benefits uh, are are there for the amount. And, and you talked know. that we can get something more out of that than what we. You're, you're I thinking? think the conversation that I heard on Tuesday was trying to get our businesses a little bit more visible, yeah. Yeah. so that some That's of the important. the layout may have to change, or uh, would would we or could we provide? Uh, tents for their, their the businesses out on the street as well. Could, I think that we can uh, we can make the businesses more visible just based on some adjustments to the layout. I think I think that's good. Uh, that's certainly a step in the right direction. I mean, it's in the right direction. I mean, you know, as we're trying to use these funds to benefit uh, the greatest amount of people that we can for the greatest benefit. So it's just a, it was a good comment. So. I think also, you know, to add to that. Because I do understand the concern. I mean, when I first saw it, I had the concern, but then I backed away from it after reading what the purpose of the money is for. And the purpose of the money is to promote tourism. And that definitely promotes tourism for our downtown. No doubt about it. So it, it meets the definition, not even just a little bit. It it's wholly meets this. So that made me feel better. But I also think given that there are more days and given maybe we can get some free tents for our retailers to, <clears throat> to check it out, right? There's also an opportunity to negotiate um, them maybe giving some of those small vendors, uh, charging them less. You know, yeah, that's helping like a small that. business. I like mm. that idea. You know, that's mm. helping. Yeah. So, I, yeah. you know, obviously it's a negotiation just like we just heard two hours ago. But those are, I mean, you know, you're trying to help. That's what the purpose of this money is for. Mm -hmm. So I think there could be any number of things, and maybe it's not every single event has to have every piece of it. But be creative, I think, is what we can say. But yeah, think about it that way. Good, good suggestion. No, that's it. It was a good suggestion. Any other questions? No? Um, my question is this part. You gonna make this easy? We're, I mean, obviously you have requirements, but we're, we're all pointing it's to not us. gonna be a three page application and wait 20 months before they get their check and. We're, we're gonna make it as seamless as we can. There are requirements. Yeah, there's, uh, everyone, every agency has to get a DUNS number, which is simple. Then you get a SAMS registration, which is, a, it's simple to do, but it takes a little longer. It's free. They're both free access to get those. Um, we'll have to have agreements for all these. We'll have to have uh, subrecipient agreements, and we're going to make those as seamless as we can. Uh, there, there are certain things they do have to agree to, uh, similar to what we agreed to when we got our federal money, because they are getting a, a pass through from us. So, but uh, there's this certification for lobbying they'll have to uh, agree to, and also uh, a couple things like that. But we will make it as seamless as we can. And as far as the timing, we'll want the, we'll ask them to get their DUNS number right away, which is, that's a one day thing. We want that done and, and we, we want the agreement signed before we give them the funding. But if there is some of these that are sooner than that, we can give them, we could do the agreement and the funding as long as they agree to make sure they get their SAMS registration done at some point, because that's, those are two things that we'll get in trouble for if they don't have both those. Jennifer, um, mm -hmm. is, is there going to be, I guess, one person to manage this? Hi, Jory. <laughs> yeah. Actually, well, they yeah. love you, Jory. Because yeah. I know they're going to call about, okay, how do I get my SAM number? And then they're going to ask you some other question about the event. It's well, never going to be that clean cut. So it so has to be somebody that they know and 
Jory, uh, Jory will work fi for finance. She'll know who to go to in, will work to with, with finance. She'll know who to go to to get the answers to, the, to those questions. And just to give you an uh, example of the DUNS number and the SAM registration, the chamber had to do that when we were going to do the right. signing bonuses, and they did it really quickly. Mm -hmm. they did. So, and relatively easily. So I'm not expecting that, that, that it's a requirement for the subrecipient. There's no way around it. So, uh, you know, I'm anticipating that that, that will go very quickly. Um, and there's some reporting as well. So we're going to have to really put together the program. We'll put all the information that we can on one sheet, give it to Jory, and she'll know who to call and kind of shepherd people through this process. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Jory's everywhere. Oh, she <laughs> is. Um, again, I just, I hear it all the time when all the, the little tents and you, you know, we talk about it as tourism. True. But when the stores are so totally blocked that people don't see them or can't get to them, it causes, it is a continuing issue that I hear about downtown. Well, so. not to get into the weeds, but I would, because I hear it all the time, but you, you know, do too. That's, most, I think, part of my. Most of our vendors are on the West End. Most of our retailers, not all of them, but most. So maybe we just need to move it back up a little bit so that it can space out a little bit better. But again, I don't, I don't want to get in the weeds. Okay. We have been looking, we, even the last day or two, we have been looking at some some ways to adjust the, the, okay. the site. Okay, anybody from the public here wish to speak to this? Seeing or hearing none, can I have a motion to approve this plan as presented? So moved. Second. Commissioner Franey and Commissioner Twenga. Thank you very much. Any final comments, uh, Commissioner Franey? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great, you know, again, I'll reiterate, you know, yes, we're giving money, but it really is what we're doing is giving, we're waiving city and sheriff costs that are due to the sheriff and to us. Well, to us be a, with the sheriff. But, but again, so it's just a way to jumpstart to me from a customer-friendly <laughs> way of saying, hey, we're not going to charge you this. Um, because we want to, you know, we realize you've been hurt and we want to get you kicked off. So I just, I think it's a really, really smart use of rescue money. Really, really smart use of rescue money. I agree. And it will really help our nonprofits, which is awesome. Commissioner Twanga, any questions? I agree with Mo and I agree with what you said. This is this is money that was provided to us to, uh, to use it to, to help promote the activities and get us back up on speed as quick as we can. And we've got some somebody here that can do that, knows how to do that really well for us. So I'm, I'm, I'm real pleased about this. I think this is great. Thank you, Commissioner. You know, I'm very pleased that it'll, it will help people. But, you know, how many years ago was it, 20, 22, 25, that we actually did pay? Yeah, we year. used to pay these. We, we used, used to, pay. to pay all these costs. I mean, I'm just throwing it out there. I'm just telling you. Uh, yeah, don't start that. <laughs> don't start that one. No, no, yeah, this, yeah, no, this, no, no, this no, no, is no. seed money for now. <laughs> no, but the good thing is Never that mind. we're actually <laughs> able to look to do that. She's gonna no, I think it's, it. I think it's great. Commissioner Gunn? Uh, ditto. Okay, and I ditto too. Thank you, Jennifer, because I saw that these things were eligible and I came to you, I think in July, mm -hmm. and said, can we start looking at this and thinking about it? And now it, here it is in fruition, and I, I really appreciate my colleagues mm -hmm. looking at this. It's a great idea. Oh, um, it really is good. And I think it's a very quick, way of infusing and helping many people at once but it's always about the administration of the program so no pressure hey my kid works as he'll work he'll be an intern for you <laughs> there you go okay thank you everybody and i'm really excited about this okay roll call vote please commissioner kynes aye vice mayor Dow. aye commissioner Fonda. aye aye <coughs> I and that motion passes unanimously. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Jory, Les, you yeah. got it. <laughs> yeah. um, then now we have the uh, the balance of the discussion on uh, Jennifer's uh, performance evaluation slash salary and all of that stuff. I'd like to move we postpone this That's to the next meeting. <laughs> no, <just kidding. laughs> oh my God! <laughs> you know what? I'm willing to make a motion. Go right ahead. Okay. Now, my motion is that we give Jennifer the Bright Spark Award, which is 1% of her salary 
but we base it upon her Herculean efforts for the GDP. Thank Is you. there a second? I second. Okay. Any final comments? No, I think I said it. Any final comments? Yeah, I, I just have one. I, I think that um, I'm reading from the policy. The Bright Spark Award will be tied to a discrete action rather than awarded for a situation of consistently outstanding performance, which we know we get from you, Jennifer, which would usually be addressed either through the city's recognition leave pro policy and or the annual performance evaluation. And I wholeheartedly, um, that was my feeling. Gladys Douglas uh, Preserve was, you know, <coughs> huge. I mean, it was beyond the beyond. And I think if, if that doesn't, you know, resonate to this, nothing does. And I mean, even the state was amazed. It, it was a model of, you know, it was given a 10. You know, no one else, I think the closest was a six of anybody else that applied for the grant money. I mean, on every level, it took a continued push, and I know you and Barry sometimes, and I mean, it was, so I just think it's, it's a, I'm glad you made your motion like that. I think that's exactly why we should give our city manager the bonus. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner, Vice Mayor. As a whole, I do not like bonuses. Um, I think it is a way outside of the city of Dunedin, but it's a way for corporations to cheapen salaries, that they're more willing to give a bonus, so then that bonus isn't incorporated into any future salary increases. Um, and the teacher salaries of a, the bonus for $1,000 is just one example. Uh, so I'd rather think that, and I'm, although I'm in favor of bonuses that are Christmas bonuses and things of that nature that are more widely given out, um, I'm hesitant that this program <clears throat> While I, I, I support senior staff today and the city manager today, future directors, future city managers, I, I don't want this bonus program to somehow cheapen the performance evaluations and the just do salary increases, percentages that they, they're deserving. I think if somebody's doing a fabulous job, that it is do just is reflected in, in the salary increase that they get. And so that's, that's my comment about. So uh, I, can I, mm -hmm. based on yeah. that, mm -hmm. Jennifer, you told me, I mean, I'm not trying to put you in a hot seat or anything, but you, you did tell me that in Coral Springs and Tamarack, one of the places, I think both, <coughs> that you got bonuses. Yes. That that was standard. Yes. Did it lessen your do you think it lessens your paycheck? I mean, you, you understand what he's trying to say. Do you, do you feel do. like it? Uh, no, no, I didn't. It, 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 was, a, it was for doing an, a, an act like it this. It was doing one thing, and it was $2,000 in a week's vacation. That's what you got. Yes. And Teresa, mm -hmm. your understanding? Uh, well, the policy that's in place now that you read actually came from a program that we have we had my former employer had gotcha so did you feel it took away um no i think you know in and i i kind of see what vice mayor is saying because i can i have seen where instead of giving salary increases they've given yeah, bonuses yeah so they're not adding like to the game. bottom line correct mm -hmm. but i think in this the the intent of this one is not is to actually enhance um, what the employee is doing um, as a one-time, you know, um, offering to really um, say, hey, that's a really great job over and above what you normally do. Gotcha. Does that make you feel any better? Uh, yes and no. I, I mean, it's just a feeling that I have. Yeah. <clears throat> and it goes back to my real statement is I, I truly do trust current administration and they're they're using this justly. It's just my concern of having a policy that that will continue on into the future, and at some point, that um, it yeah, yeah. No, I uh, you know, have because if we voted on, and I can't remember, so I do apologize. Have we voted on the actual salary increase yet? Yeah, the percentage. We did. Yeah, did we? Three percent. Did we give it three percent? Mm. Same as the rest. Of Same the as place. everybody. Mm. Possible. Right. Yeah. And I, I will vote in favor of this. I just wanted to get my comments out there sure. and heard if that's Fair. a concern for anybody. And I think the class study will help with that. 
Yeah, and I mean, I, I have my own opinions on bonuses, which I've shared with Teresa and Jennifer about, you know. <coughs> so I, I understand. I understand. Mm -hmm. It was Are my motion. motion. Commissioner Torga? <laughs> okay, thank you. The following is a brief review of the Bright Shark, Smart, or Spark, Spark. Bright Award Spark. program. It should be the Bright Star. I think so it should easy. be the Bright Star, too. Oh, I mean, it's which I knew nothing of. And, and based on the comments made on the other members of the, of, the, of the commission at that time when we did the review, I'm not sure either that, that they knew much about this. No. Um, additionally, after review of the program um, and the organizations that I've served as a manager and, owners, a, and owner of, um, I, I don't like this program. I wouldn't use this program. I wouldn't have this program as, as I feel like it affects the collaborative culture of the organization and, and I think we could develop something much better than this. Um, so I'm sorry about attacking the program but that's just my opinion. I thought I would give it. Um, I uh, do not support the program. Further it appears as though the program was provided for others rather than for the city manager. Um, I think apparently then it was because they, we talked about the fact that even though it states that uh, that the very listing, including the deputy city manager and, and the, uh, the directors as potential recipients, um, it seemingly separates the program from the city manager. Uh, so this program was perhaps designed and previously suggested as a bonus for the previous deputy city manager. I asked for a copy of what it had been because I noticed that there was a, a new uh, a change to the policy. Um, and so I had first gotten the, I didn't know about the original policy. And I just want to point out that, that this is a policy and the purpose was a means for the city to uh, promote productivity. Um, again, I think there's other ways of doing that. Eligibility, it says the, the it says all full-time and part-time city employees, uh, including department directors and deputy city manager, are eligible to receive the, Bark, uh, the Bright uh, Spark Award. Independent contractors and temporary uh, employees, whether contracted by the city or through an agency, are not eligible to receive an award. And of course, our city manager is, does have a contract with the, with the city. Uh, the policy, under the policy, it recognizes uh, one-time employees' contributions, and that was covered uh, by, I think, by, by Mo, uh, right? I think in the very beginning, you, and, you, and you brought out a specific, a specific action that, that, she had, that she had completed. We hadn't done that before. Um, it talks about a one-time excep exceptional achievement uh, that might be otherwise uh, uh, not noticed. Um, of course, this was, was obviously very much in the forefront of what she had done. Um, this, uh, and, and it also was supposed to be something that was a discrete action. Um, the city's recognition, and, and, and then they could receive something other than just the city's recognition uh, for the leave policy. Uh, the Bright Star Award recommendation, it says the city manager shall have the final approval of all Bright Spark awards the recommend and then it goes on and talks about the recommendation shall be submitted in writing to the human resources department um, the city manager may choose to recognize employees without a departmental <coughs> recommendation i would not recommend that in a company that i was involved in uh, once approved the employee recipient will receive a congratulatory letter from the city manager with the award amount and a copy of the recommendation uh, memo. And the second, the new version goes on and, and lists uh, a couple different things than what the first one did. Um, in, in my question, by the way, um, in the first one, what we did, I, I asked for a copy and I did not get a signed copy, but I assumed this was signed, the first one. We. That happened right around the time that um, COVID hit and we moved. And I think I got a, I have a signed copy, but I have not been able to locate it. Okay. Um, 
Can I, can I ask you a quick question? Um, because there's, it sounds like there's two issues going on here. I think you maybe have some issues with the policy and what you want to see out of the policy. And then right now we have a motion on the floor to talk about her bonus. So is, I guess, maybe the question's not for you. Are you looking to change the policy itself? Is that what you're looking to well, do? Because I'm, that's what it sounds like. Well, you're, you're kind of interrupting me right now, but that's okay. Um, when I get to the end, but what I'm saying is I, I, I'm not sure that the policy is really directed at the city manager. I'm trying to point that out. I think the policy was perhaps for employees. How, how many other employees have received this? Doug. Just, Doug. Just one. City manager, the former deputy city manager. Okay. So um, so this, this policy has really been written for, I guess, for Doug then, and, and, and now we're using it. You use the word bonus. Um, this was this was a this was a bonus, I guess one could say for a specific action. Um, furthermore, furthermore, this was dated on March 1, 2020, and it was revised on April 15, 2021, and it was signed. So therefore, then April or 4 15, 2021, it was signed by uh, HR 4:15-21. It was signed by the city manager on 92821. Uh, we had discussed it on 916 <laughs> So I'm very much for transparency always. Um, I, and, I, and I'm also in for, fair, for fairness. Um, I think that this program um, was, I don't know, I don't think it really is a policy for our employees at this point in time. Um, and, and I'm not sure we're, we're we're doing ourselves a favor by continuing with this policy or this concept. Uh, I would rather see us have a, a much, if you want to have a policy, have a broader policy. I'm not sure that you would include the city manager in it. Um, but that's neither here nor there. I am concerned about the organization. That's why I brought up about the policy and changing the policy. Uh, I'm concerned about me being involved in, in, in authorizing this. And frankly, um, I'm not gonna be supportive of, of the bonus. Um, that's principally because of the policy and it's principally because um, I, feel, I feel like we, if we wanna do some recognition like this, this should be on a broader base and should be done uh, with someone else and to someone else. And that's not my responsibility to do, of course. Me? So, Okay, so well, can I just let me kind of point out one thing real quick. Yes, just to I don't want to I don't I just want to point out because there was one I and I you can all have different opinions on it. I did want to thank the commission as well because since the last time I think I put it in the memo. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to look at the established policy because as I mentioned, that's an important component of it. Um, the one thing and so that confirmations in the agenda memo that in terms of the eligibility to all employees, um, the work, um, basing on work performance and um, describing the performance standards that, 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 I, that I checked those things. So I appreciate the time to do that. But I just wanted to make one, just to the commissioner's point, because I know he mentioned that the city manager has a contract and would that make it an excluded independent contractor? And I, commissioner, I just want to let you know that just, it, the city manager does have an employment contract, but she is an employee. You play, you pay employment taxes under that contract. It's a, it's a contract for employment. So it is eligible to all employees. And I just wanted that to be clear that the city manager is an employee, not an independent contractor. An, ex an example of an independent contractor is, is me. Um, I'm not an employee. You don't pay my employment taxes. You have a contract with my law firm. So that's just, just to give an example, because I didn't want that to be confused that this is a city manager an employee. You can all have different ideas about what you want to do ultimately, and that's not commissioner to say anything about the, you know, I just wanted to make that comment that the city manager is not an independent contractor. And can you clarify the issue of the city manager title not being named in the policy? It's because it's, all the employees report to her. I, I can't, I don't, I can't, I wasn't, I, it, I can't speak to why, all I can say is it okay. says all employees. It but says it all employees, the city manager is an employee. 
I can't speak to why gotcha. the word city manager wasn't added as well as deputy city manager. It's but it says all employees, and then it gives some examples of other employees. But it says, but it is clearly eligible. But it it's clearly says all employees. And Teresa, and that's a component. Is that the assumption is because all the employees report to her. Yeah, I mean when the the policy was made, you know, it was for all employees. Um, obviously, if Jennifer was on the consideration, her supervisors would be the ones who would yes, sign off. And it would be our determination. Right. You are the supervisor. So yeah, Jennifer couldn't determine by herself that she was eligible right. for the award. Which is why it's not listed there like that. Well, okay. it, it does say she's a sole, she's a sole person for, for this program. <laughs> if I'm the president of a company, I would have, a, when I have a program, I'm not in the program. I wouldn't even think about being in the program. Um, right. but I think I'm just saying, I'm just saying, so that's where some of my references what, coming what from. It's, what it's saying is that she's the final approver, just as she approves all of our salary increases, she approves our personnel changes. I approve and then she approves. So a department head or a supervisor can recommend the person for the award, and then she would look at the, both of us would look at the reason for the recommendation and and say okay yes or you know if the person said we want them to get the hundred dollars and Jennifer said no this is this is more noteworthy than that Jennifer has the the ability to give that person more than what was recommended I'm so gonna, that's that's I'm, how I'm it was gonna written talking. I'm going to stop talking about it I gave my opinion about okay. it and so it it, 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 no, you don't have to stop. I'm just saying I'm just going to stop talking well, about I, it. I'm going to leave it. Yeah, and I, because we're borderline getting in on the administrative programs for our employees that we have no authority to approve. So right. I don't want to go down that road. And I'm not trying to disrespect you, John. I, I, You have to kind of tell the whole story to get your opinion out, and I do get that. I just don't want us to start dancing down a road that is an administrative issue, policies, employee procedures. We have nothing to do with that. Commissioner. Well, yeah, I mean, with all due respect, I think, you know, I think some of what Commissioner Torn is saying is, is true. I mean, it was intended to be administrative. We didn't know what it was. I mean, I didn't know. I'd never heard of it. So, I mean, I know I validate that. We didn't know what it was. And, and of course, it was the vehicle by which we were, you know, that you put forth to try to give her a bonus, which I think is the only vehicle. Because if there hadn't been a policy in place that was available to all employees, we could not give it to her. Am I correct, Nikki? Correct. Okay. So it was, it's the only vehicle. And so for me, it caught me off guard last time. I wasn't sure how to deal with that. It has only been given to one other person. I have the same concern about it being really truly a widely um, you know, uh, publicized <laughs> thing and people have, have uh, the ability. I think it is administrative, but I think we have the right to know what the budgets are. And, and you know, because it does affect the budget. I, I've, I've certainly been in HR long enough to see things explode and become bigger than what they're supposed to be. Um, and and, and uh, so, and I, but I do support, you know, some type of um, bonuses that are widely distributed. But again, it was chosen as a vehicle, the only vehicle by which we could give the city manager something. I think the Gladys Douglas Preserve absolutely fits it. And, but I also think, I mean, as we move forward, as you move forward administratively, you know, we need to decide what those, you know, programs are, how they're budgeted, you know, and that kind of thing so we can feel comfortable with things in the future. So yeah. I just wanted to kind of say that. So, I mean, I just think there's some good points being made, John. I, I, I certainly, I, I understand your points. Um, I still think um, this is the only vehicle by which we can do it. I think Gladys Douglas Preserve fits it. Um, so I'm comfortable with it. But that doesn't mean I don't think that there's probably some work that you, that you guys need to do about, you know, your bonus programs. So. Mayor. Yes, ma'am. I do want to address one one um, comment that the commissioner brought up, and that is the date of the signatures on the policy itself. So when we decided to, that's Teresa and I decided to roll out the customer service standards again, and also we were directed by the city commission to create an employee of the year program. And to do that, you have to have an employee of the month program as well, because it built up the employee of the year program. So Teresa mm -hmm. and I went through painstakingly, actually, um, that particular policy and how it is that we could open it up to recognize uh, some of the smaller um, customer service uh, things that, that, our, uh, that our employees were doing. 
and it wouldn't be like the bright, bright spark is that that flash that that over and above that you know you 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 pull you know it's a miracle type of a thing. The others were how do we recognize employees who on an everyday basis are are going above and beyond and exceeding our expectations. So we revised the program uh, for the second part, which is I think it's a hundred dollar reward and a day off as well. Um, the, uh, Teresa executed that document and either it was on my desk and it wasn't executed or, or I'm not sure why it wasn't executed by me at that time. It was approved by me at that time. I am not going to sign a document. I'm not gonna sign a document that, that essentially was put on my desk most likely back in March, in April. I'm not gonna sign it in April. I signed it on 928, the date that it, it was pre presented back to me. You know, I'm not going to, to predate it, yeah, because that's the date I approved it. it. When it was on my desk, that's the date that I'd signed it. And, and that, to me, is transparency. Thank you. Okay, so um, we have a motion and a second. I have, didn't get my comments, but I think I said a lot of how I felt about your performance, and it was why I suggested this pathway, which I also felt was the most transparent way to do it, as it was an existing thing. I wasn't trying to reinvent the wheel. Um, and I appreciate all your efforts. Thank you very much, Mayor. Roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Gow. Aye. Commissioner Tornga. Nay. Commissioner Praney. Aye. Commissioner Kynes. Aye. Mayor Brzezowski. Aye, and the motion passes four to one. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay, we now have a start item, Florida Business Incubator. Oh my God. Follow up. I was getting ready to <laughs> roll out. I was pushing. I need a. I need a motion to add this to the. Okay, agenda. I'll, I'll, I'll add Second. it. Second. Okay, Commissioner Kynes and Commissioner <laughs> oh, Tornga. Thank you. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Robert. Yes, Mayor and Commissioners, Bob Ironsmith, Director of Economic Development. Uh, tonight uh, before you is a follow-up report from the Florida Business Incubator. Uh, this item came before you on, on July 13, and the Commission directed staff to ask uh, the, the Florida Business Incubator for some additional information. That's in your packet, what we received. Uh, they have some uh, tables and charts there based on businesses incubated and what their attendance is. Um, it is difficult for us to gauge. I think a key item that continued to come up with the Commission was return on investment for this program. This program has been in existence for a number of years. Um, they've certainly have had a change in chair uh, three, and uh, we don't have all the historical data from them that we'd like to see. So uh, based on that, uh, although we think the overall concept is a very good one. When we came before you a number of years ago, it was to uh, get diversity in our economy because in Dunedin we're very service oriented and we wanted to get higher paying jobs. And that was kind of the genesis, if you will, to get this going. Uh, but since that time, with the, the numerous turnover and changes and lack of collaboration with some of our different organizations in the city, um, staff is recommending uh, to uh, discontinue the funding and to look uh, you know, in the future as to something that maybe uh, could be a good fit. And we're looking to base this on, and we did work with the city attorney, Nikki Day, and city manager, Jennifer. Uh, basically, uh, we had that ability, that clause, and agreement on budget considerations. And that is really what the standing is to not go forward with this agreement. And I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. And Jennifer certainly has been involved every step of the way, uh, meeting with uh, FBI and, and me as staff. Any other comments, Jennifer? None. I did. Uh, we did reach out uh, to Russ Hilton, who's the CEO. Uh, I thought it, it was better to uh, to convey to him what staff's recommendation would be, and and let him know that that the five of you are the final decision makers, uh, and he didn't have any further comments. So. Okay. Any questions for Bob? I mean, I have a comment, but sure. any questions? I, I have questions. Sure. <clears throat> Bob, what are we going to do? Are we going to? When are we going to cut this off? And, 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 and I'm not sure exactly where they are right now in their meetings and, and, and what they're working on. Are we supporting them in any shape, manner, or form? And for how long are we going to be supporting uh, them? We certainly were supporting them financially, you know, per the, per the agreement. Um, I do need to convey a little bit with uh, City Attorney Nikki Day uh, based on, on termination with this agreement. We certainly would need to give them notice, you know, some type of letter. I'd just like to consult with um, City Attorney Nikki as far as the time period for that. 
And, and that would be based on also what you know where they are and what they're working on and, and what's happening so they don't... Yeah, I... I, I would I, guess if we got... I, I mean, I don't know where they are, Bob, but yeah, they, you I mean, should. But. Yeah, I mean, they certainly continue to work with Clearwater through Spark. Um, I, I don't necessarily uh, feel that this is just going to go ahead and, 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 and stop them from continuing. Uh, I think they'll continue to look to get sponsors, which is something that we kind of looked at as natural evolution as a program continued over the years, too. And I know they are uh, looking at other places to raise some dollars. And I don't know all the particulars on that one. So our, our, our concept, though, is to stay in touch with them and, and to work with them. Uh, I, I would trust or I would guess, or if I'm incorrect, please tell me. Uh, yeah, I mean, as far as working with them, I, I think that, uh, I mean, I'm certainly happy to talk with them, but no, it wasn't something that we were going to continue to work closely with them. Uh, so the, with the agreement terminated, um, we'd certainly stay in touch and see what they're doing, but uh, it wasn't something that we'd be actively managing. I'm asking because I know yep. you were the one that's really strongly supported this. I did, and 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 it didn't it didn't I guess pan out the way you wanted it to. Cool. And I know we're kind of I know we're just stopping it, and we're 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 going to be voting to to do that or, or not to do that. But if we if we do that, I just wanted to make sure that there was some exit strategy that if there needed to be, that's that's helpful for them. Uh, I don't know what if it needs. No, uh, certainly, Commissioner. Yeah, I, I, I did strongly uh, uh, move forward with this idea. You know, I, I still believe in the concept. You see the kind of writing or verbiage in, in the staffing. I think it's something that the city needs. Uh, I think a couple of key ingredients is one is revitalization of our corridors and also get a little bit more diversified in, in our uh, economic base. Uh, th this one, because of various reasons, uh, just in, I'm going to use your words, Commissioner, pan out the way that we had hoped with a strong return on investment. But it doesn't necessarily mean that there isn't something that will come here in the future that maybe uh, we could strongly uh, get behind and come to you. But, but there's nothing in the wings at this point in time. I'm asking you principally, just so you know, yeah. for the people that are here that that might want to have access to something like that that we're, we're assisting oh, okay. along those lines. Uh, I can comment on that, if I may, Commissioner. I understand what you're saying. Uh, the, the Pinellas County Economic Development has a representative that goes to the chamber once a month with office hours there that can field questions. We certainly have some other organizations. Uh, you know, we certainly can put people in touch with uh, SCORE. Uh, so there are other, uh, St. Pete College is another one that we're trying to reach out to a little bit. So I think there are other ways that we can help, and, and certainly if someone needs to help, they can uh, call my office at 298-3207, uh, 727-298-3207. Uh, uh, but a lot of times they do just because the visitor center at the chamber, they might start there. Uh, one of the things that uh, the city is, is now working with is uh, the Business Alliance, which is kind of getting all these organizations together. Uh, visit Dunedin, which I know, Mayor, I think you recently attended, uh, the Merchant Association uh, and, and the Chamber and the City all working in, in unison. And um, I, I think that's also something that's going to strengthen, the, you know, the economic base and marketing and tourism for, for the city. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I answered your question specifically. I kind of danced around a little I, bit. I think you know my concern, and I think you understand, and I think you have a feeling for that because obviously you wanted to do this before. Yes. So. I just want to make sure that whoever needs that has that, that sort of support. And I'm, I am following what's going on within the city of all those organizations, so I do know that. Right. But, but you know, there it is, there it sits, and people have known about it and have heard about it. So I just wanted to ask. Certainly. And, and the business incubator is not going away. They're still going to operate. So if, they, yeah. if an, any of the local businesses want to get their support, they can. Yeah, it just doesn't, uh, they're certainly looking. It's just not financially supported from us. Correct, gotcha. and that's correct. Well, I mean, you know, Bob, you and I, we, I, I still believe that it's very important that we nurture, you know, entrepreneurship, Agreed. and that was the bottom line. It was the Oxford Exchange. Could we get something going like the Oxford Exchange that really called to those really creative spirits that were, you know, they they wanted to do their own thing, so. Um, there was a lot of turmoil. There's a lot of turnover. You had this leader. You had that leader. You had you never had a real place that they called their own. There was just a lot of things that just didn't gel. And you know, I'm sorry. And I, I because I do think there's a need for that kind of nurturance to for those young 
well, not, it doesn't have to be young. I mean, no. just energetic, creative spirits. But um, I think, you know, I read all the things in here. I looked at all their financials. And it's very clear that we're their only, we're their sole support, uh, particularly for the last year. I mean, it's, that's it. It was, so. Yeah, oh, excuse me, Commissioner. Yeah, yes, it was supposed to evolve and get self sustaining. Yeah, you know, it was a very much aggressive. Yeah, transferred from, from questions to comments. So, oh, okay. <laughs> there is no controlling Deborah when it comes to questions and comments. I just told her she couldn't have a comment, no, and you I just took it over. Speak, so. uh, okay. <laughs> I, I did this. I apologize. I did the same thing. No, thing. maybe I'm rambling too. I didn't no, no. mean to. No, but, uh, no. Rambling while the Rays game. We are all rambling. <laughs> you know, we all want to, we're all like, want to get out of here. We all want to see the Rays. We just no. care. Nah, it's all good. This is important. You, I understand. No, I said it. I mean, but okay. I, I just want to be transparent too. That I'm, you know. Oh. Yeah. It's not your, you're not. It's not that you're not supportive of the service. It's just this the isn't the right avenue at this moment. Concept. Moment. Uh, yeah. That that's it. I think the concept is a strong one. I think it's something that makes sense for the city. And I just think there will be something down the road that I'll be coming before you. So I, I certainly believe in this and revitalizing the corridors too. Those and you're working on that? Yes. Come back to Commissioner Franny. Okay, this is just comments. Yes. <laughs> well, it's, no question. it's gone off the rails. Yeah, so it's off the rails. <laughs> so, um, right. No, I mean, my only comment is, I mean, obviously I support the concept, but I mean, really, you only <laughs> had to look at the data that they gave us to say no. $33,000 of taxpayers' money, that doesn't make sense. I mean, I was surprised at the data. I mean, it's not, it, there's nothing there. There's no, no. I mean, there's some charts with no backup, no nothing. I mean, I don't even know what it means. So I, um, you know, I support staff's decision, and I'm not trying to demean the organization, uh, but I think that, you know, being their primary and only funder, I would have expected more. And, and I, I can't, for one, I could not yeah. justify continuing because we've asked for data over and over and over, and this is the best we've got, and it's not good. Yeah, I, I can tell you both the, the city manager, Jennifer, and myself spent a lot of time on this and, and looked at it very hard. I know and, you did. I and, know and, you guys tried to get yeah, it. Yeah, we just didn't get I the... I looked at it, and I'm thinking, this is what we got after pounding the drum for months. I, I yeah, just, we didn't get the substance that we were looking yeah. for. I mean, this, we, we... This really doesn't tell me anything, yeah. um, so... I mean, but I, but I appreciate the work of trying um, because I think the concept of be, have incubator is good, but obviously we need to go a different direction. Yeah, and, and now too, uh, you know, I, I just got a new additional, not additional, I, I got a, a new staff person to replace the one that uh, retired. So I think it's a new day there too where we can look at some of these economic measures and follow it a little, little bit more closely. And the county's going to do some more stuff, right? Are well, you kind of pushing them to try to do that? Or were uh, they kind of seeing that they want to do that? Yeah, I, excuse me, uh, Commissioner. Yeah, I think there's an opportunity there, too. The, the director has now been announced, which is Cynthia Johnson, is very big on, on business, small business, entrepreneurial, and those type of activities. So we're going to try to... Cynthia Johnson's the new... Yeah, a new yeah. Mike Mydell. I did not know that. I yes. know Cynthia very well. Wow. Well, yes, we... Congratulate her. Yes, please do. And we certainly think that's a strong opportunity. Uh, you know, we obviously the chair is, is a former mayor here, Chair uh, Eggers. Uh, he always believes in uh, North County. So, yeah, I, I think things are starting to align. So, uh, you know, ho hopefully come before you and, and say, yeah, this, this resonates. Thank you, Bob. Vice Mayor? Comments or uh, just whatever you want. Go for it. It's all Whatever. in your lap. Whatever you want to do. No, no pressure. Uh, Bob, you know that my my feelings and support over the concept is has always always been there. And pre COVID, I attended yeah. most, if not all, of every meeting they had. Did. Um, and every year when we we rebudgeted, we put that money out there. There was it this is the year kind of feeling or any time that there was a, a change in the board, it was okay, the new board, fresh, exciting energy. And, um, and it just never came to be what we all envisioned it could be. Uh, I'm still a believer in, in that concept. So <clears throat> please don't let the, let the concept die. Okay. Uh, revision, repurpose, revision, reach out to the county or whatever because um, it needs to continue. We need to focus on our small businesses and giving them inspiration and encouragement and support. Um, but yeah, at this time, it, was, it just wasn't a good use of taxpayer money. 
I, I, I certainly agree, and I, and I think, you know, working with uh, uh, Jennifer that maybe we can get the county to partner with us, too, so we can get a little yeah. bigger field, you know, to help that, support this idea. type of initiative. And yeah. with, with a new director there, that's something we'll be reaching out to, to do. So, so I, I just echo everything that everybody said. Um, I think we like the concept. I also think we can't reinvent the wheel, and I think we tried to, you know, uh, incubators generally need office space and we didn't take it to that level and I'm not saying we should or shouldn't but I you know it was a piece that was missing that a home yeah a home, never had a home. yeah or it, and it doesn't have to be a big building it could be a couple offices it's just something for people to use um, but anyway I you know I'm really glad also to hear that we're going to reimagine this thing and try to figure out the next step we need to work with our own business community now, you know, and the organizations and what their thoughts are. I'm sure they have thoughts as to what might work. Um, so uh, what is the... Okay, so the motion will be to discontinue funding for the FBI, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, can I have a motion to discontinue funding for FBI? So moved. Second. Vice Mayor and Commissioner Franey. Let's do a roll call vote, please. Commissioner Torger. Aye. Commissioner Kynes. Aye. Commissioner Franey. Aye. Vice Mayor Dow. Aye. Mayor Bushowski. Aye, and that motion passes unanimously. Um, and then we have the agenda for October 21st, which includes the Jay's Hotel. Yes. Um, can I have a motion to approve? Mayor, if I may. The I'm sorry, the um, item 2E is the purchase of Jerry Lake. Oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah, we're removing the Jerry Lake, but we're adding the, the uh, Jay's Hotel. Jay's Hotel. Okay, can I have a motion to approve? Yeah. Well, um, yeah. I think in your email today from Teresa, yeah. she did ask for the city clerk's annual group. Oh, yes. To be she postponed um, until the 4th of November. Okay, with those three changes, can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Commissioner Franey and Vice Mayor Gao, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, I'm, I'm really sorry, but that that church, it, it's on there, right? October 21st, because you got to do October 21st and November 4th, so they get the plaque. The first Presbyterian 150 years. That's got to be on there, October 21st. Yeah, 455 Scotland. Scotland. Yes. Okay, right. Yeah, I'm like, okay, I, I mean, there. yeah, I just. The motion passes unanimously. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else we need to ha absolutely have to discuss today? <laughs> uh, well, I love how open that feels. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, I don't. It's my, it's my nudging of saying we got to go. The, the ball game's on. This is not warm and fuzzy. Stop it. We're done. Thank you for watching this City of Dunedin government meeting. If you'd like to review any part of this meeting or watch any previous government meeting coverage, you can watch these meetings online anytime through the city's website, DunedinGov.com. Stay connected with everything Dunedin. Follow the city on this channel and on the city's Facebook page, through Twitter, and on the city's YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching this Dunedin Television production.